Black Oni. You're now listening to the Black Oni Podcast. iTunes, through YouTube, and iTunes as well, uh, to another exciting episode of the Black Only Podcast. I am your host, JBlaze06, and I'm joined today by three other people. One of them you will re- recognize from a lot of other podcasts. It is Soyo, aka Soat. What's up? The other is It's Yoru. Yo. <laughs> and we have a new special guest for this podcast. Um, what is your gaming handle? What is What do you go by in terms of gaming? Uh, most, uh, I go by, uh, Harold Balls. Harold Balls. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah. But this is, this is Ben, Ben Hindle. He is the developer behind the iOS game that actually just released, Because Zombies. Because Zombies, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, su- super good to be with you guys. Yeah, thanks a lot for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, once I saw the trailer and saw what you were doing and saw the, obviously, the title of the game, Because Zombies, I was like, oh, this is... This is, he's going to fit in just fine. <laughs> this is going to be great. Cool. Um, and so, you know, we had a little discussion, kind of like getting to know each other a little bit before the podcast started. Um, but to continue further uh, introducing ourselves to each other and, you know, jumping into our icebreaker, usually I, I start off like, icebreaker! <laughs> the thing I do. Um, what is your biggest inspiration in terms of gaming in general? And, you know, what I mean by that is like, either the thing that got you, the person or the, the game that got you so involved into gaming in the first place, or the thing that kind of, like for your example, for, uh, for, for you, for example, Ben, like the thing that convinced you to start getting into development. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know. It was, it was way, way back. Like, I don't know if uh, I, got, I played a game uh, called, uh, like what, what got me uh, like super jazzed about games was I played, you know, I played Doom for quite a while, mm-hmm. like way back in the 90s, and I got really used to, you know, you know, I was really interested in that, but it wasn't really like, uh, it didn't really completely blow me away. Mm. But there was a time where I got a new computer, like I saved all my money and and I bought this really cheap computer, but it had like, I kept reading about these, uh, like, how you could enable 3D, like 3D rendering, and I was like, what is that? Like, what, what are, what, you know, what is this? What do I need these drivers for and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, and. Um, so then I finally was like, hey, I'm going I'm to investigate this. And I, and I was playing Quake 2 at the time, and I was playing in mm. software mode. And I thought, yeah, software mode, this looks like Doom. I, I, you know, this is not, no, nothing new. But then I enabled the, like, the 3D rendering mode, and I was like, what is this? You know, like, this is crazy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, know, it's just like, it was sort of the 3D rendering mode that we see, all, that we see now, but it was like, yeah. at the time, that was like, that, uh, like my, my brain was blown. And so then I, you know, then I played a lot and played a lot and played a lot. But then they released an editor for their um, for their levels, their levels like Quake Three Radiant, I think it was called. Yeah. And I got really into that. And the second I saw that, I was like, okay, I can edit these games. This is okay. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, this is what I'm doing. That's awesome. So uh, I meandered a bit, like in terms of like what I actually do. Like I did do a lot of I uh, professionally, but right right before I, I became an indie developer, I was a technical animator. Oh wow! Nice. So like a rigger. Uh, 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 you know, setting up characters and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, and I did that on like Mass Effect and a game called Jade Empire. Oh, I love and, Jade Empire! Wow, yeah, and a, a bunch of those, and then I love uh, Mass Effect too, actually. But then, too. Um, uh, but then, yeah. So it's it's all been basically related to that moment. Once way back, I found these the games I really liked, and then realized that I could edit them. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm, that's what I'm doing. So yeah, it was pretty cool. That's very cool. I actually that didn't know that awesome, you worked actually. on both of those games. Yeah. I, I personally love, like, Mass Effect is on, on my list of my top three games of all time. Oh, really? Um, wow. Absolutely. Um, amazing, I, yeah. it, it's, for me, it's Metal Gear. Um, yes. Me- yes, Metal yes. Gear is yes. my absolute favorite. It's my hands down my favorite. Next to that is Onimusha. Um, oh, my God. Oh, I, wow. they, they need to make another one. Yeah. Or a reboot or something. They need to. <laughs> and Mass Effect. Like those are my top three like games of all oh, that, time. That's um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. 
And so it's cool that I got someone here who's like been oh, working wow. on Mass Effect. <laughs> oh man, I saw so much Mass Effect there before I before it launched. I saw you know so many you know as you work, you just like you, you see those screens and those characters and those all yeah. that stuff. You see that so much yeah. that you know I've been away from it now that I'd like to see it, but at the time I was like I can't look at these guys. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, you're just like oh my god, I know you like each polygon that I made on you. Just please. Oh just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Yeah, and you, and you know all the problems behind the scenes, all the stuff that we're trying to hide, make oh, sure yeah. you don't see, and you're like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone notices this, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, totally. <laughs> That's yeah, it was so super fun, and it's funny. Like that—that's the only. I mean, I did a whole bunch of stuff after and and stuff before, but that's the only thing that people are like that. People really want to talk about Mass Effect all the time. So, mm -hmm. any any thought, any you know, that's my that's sort of my claim to fame, I guess, uh, as far as like being a, a studio developer. So yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. That wow, how how was it working on um you know like like with a lot of people just you know developing and rendering and all that? Oh, it's crazy because the. Um, it's weird because uh, working at a place like Bioware, they have like this really, really uh, high commitment to quality, mm -hmm. and every so everything's got to be just so amazing. And they're willing to take longer to develop the game. Like they they don't have any problems extending like release dates because the, the the one thing that they care about is making sure that the game is awesome. Yep. Yeah. And um, so that 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 was really cool because you know that like you, you never were unsure that you're going to release a, a great game. Um, and then also this the commitment in terms of. Uh, they would put hundreds of people, there were hundreds of people on Mass Effect 1. And it just, the team was so huge. And um, yeah. everything was so ambitious that, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty wild. But every, I mean, everybody's on the same page. Everybody wants to make the best game they can. And it's, uh, yeah, it's su super cool. And everybody's really, really smart. That no, really, no matter what you've done, you feel dumb around everybody else. Yeah, but I, think, yeah, I can imagine. But, but I think everybody feels that way a little bit. And so, yeah, yeah. It's, it was super, super cool. Yeah, re really, really interesting. That's so cool. That is I could, really I could use awesome. a couple hundred people now, but uh, I was, <laughs> a couple hundred people back then was yeah, it was really good. It's, Wait, uh, so so it's your dude. What is who is who is in terms of people or in terms of games your biggest inspiration? For for in for general, what, man? In general? Yeah, like, no, like, no like, way. I your, could your biggest inspiration in terms of like now. being invested in, <laughs> I guess, being interested in gaming, like the thing that really got you. Uh, you ain't gonna believe this. You um. Obviously, everyone plays, you know, like when they're younger, they play like, you know, like, uh, like, like SNES, uh, you know, like Ma uh, Super Mario Bros and all that. I mean, yeah, like, that's the, uh, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> I'm getting to that. The first, the, my first cognitive thought when I was like around nine or eight, I think, it was, um, I went to Blockbuster with my dad and he was like, oh, pick any game you want, any game you want. And back then they just had the little covers and a small little back preview and I was like, <laughs> Game, and it was, and I won't ever forget this. Right next, there was this game called Hercules right next to it, and I was just like, "Oh, this looks interesting." And then I look over to the right, and it says, "And there's this game that's like, um, it's this blue robot with a red robot right next, right behind him." Yes. And I was like, "Mega Man X4." I'm like, yes. "What's this?" Dude, X4, I so good. That, is, that was my first cognitive PlayStation game, and I remember I was like, "All right, I'm gonna get this instead of Hercules," because I had my mind set on just getting Hercules. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. went up and I played it, and. That blew me away. The music, the ba the the um, the, you know how it was transitioned from each stage to each stage. How you got the power and everything. I'm like that blew my mind. I was just like, no way. Yeah. This is the greatest game like I ever played, and I still to this day love X the X series. Yeah. It was that was my first game that I remember like that inspired me to game so hardcore. After that, my grades slipped and all that, and then. <laughs> <you didn't mention>. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Oh man, it was ridiculous. Yeah, um, and how, how about you? How about you? Me. Hideo Kojima as a person is my biggest inspiration. Um, yeah. In terms of games, yes, it's Metal Gear Solid 1. Um, the, the games that came after that were definitely, like, you know, they've always stepped it up in terms of, like, you know, um, in terms of, like, artistic direction, in terms of, you know, mechanics in the game, in terms of, like, cinematography. They've always stepped that stuff up, but Metal Gear Solid 1 has just a very, very special place in my heart because, like, I remember being with my brother and just playing that over... And over and over and over and never being tired of it. I don't understand why specifically, but I just I could play it for like days on end without a problem. It's wow. your soul game. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. What about um, you, Dave? Oh gosh, man, it's such a tough question. All right. Yes, it is. Well, you mentioned <laughs> really? you br was it part of the podcast where you were talking about your tops, where it was Metal Gear, um, Omnimusha, and what was the other one? Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Mass Effect. All right. 
then I'll, I'll try and do this. <laughs> I'll go back to when I was a kid. Uh, I don't know how, maybe like between seven and 10, whenever, um, Goldeneye first hit the N64. Oh, yeah. And I remember playing that at my friend's house who lived like down the hill. Like he was the house down the hill from mine, not even like down the street, like just walking distance. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't allowed to play those games when I was that young. <laughs> so I, I snuck over to his place and just consumed this game, like from start to finish again and again and again, multiplayer setting it to unlimited kills and playing till like five or six in the morning. And <laughs> oh my God. yeah, like I was, I was obsessed and it's still to date. One of my favorite games of all time next to Rocksmith 2014. And <sighs> Maybe the un- yeah yeah the Uncharted series Uncharted two stills like up oh, there for me. It's good. Yeah. Uncharted. yeah. There's, always that, there's always that weird moment, isn't there, where like maybe people our age, I don't know, or or your age and my age probably, but where <laughs> you, you kind of see a person that's like uh, you, your first multiplayer experience, where you're like, you know, wait a minute, is that another person? You know, <laughs> <laughs> playing another person? What? And 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 it, that that always is pretty mind blowing. Oh, yeah. like the, uh, the 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 online uh, multiplayer kind of thing when it first came out. Yeah. What, what was the first um the uh, the first multiplayer game that you guys played online with? Like just like completely online. Like, oh no, oh, man. Maybe maybe Unreal. Maybe like the Unreal tournament days, oh, like the early God. PC days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah it would I don't be know. Quake two for me. Quake two probably. Quake yeah. two. Oh. I waited a really long time to get into online gaming, um, and I don't know what it was. I think part of it was like at home. I didn't bother trying to get like really fast internet at the time because like I was like <laughs> I'm not really like I'm not really concerned about it. Yeah, yeah. But maybe my first online experience was Halo Two. No, that's oh. not true. Oh that wow, that's wow. Yeah. I waited really long to get into it, but I think it. I think it might have been around that time. So it might have been one of the Rainbow Six games that was out at the time. That's a no. That's nutty. Oh. Mine was um. I think mine. If I remember correctly. Oh, shit, I just had a. Um... You don't want to ask the question. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I asked him and I was like blown away by you guys, and I'm just like, okay, what was mine? <laughs> um, I do that. Oh, it was time. the uh, it was Fantasy Star. Oh, it was Fantasy Star Online nice. back in the day. Yeah, oh. I remember that. I was like, I was like 13, 14 at the time, and it was just yeah. like online. I was like, all right, cool. And then I started playing it, and I was like, I was blown away. I was just like, this guy is somewhere, you know, like, you know continents away and he's he was australian i won't ever forget my first fa- um fantasy star friend he was australian he added me to his buddy list and i was like whoa this is cool and i started chatting with him he's like yeah from, i'm from australia and stuff like that and like it was ridiculous because at that point i knew that gaming was going to become so so much more worldwide more universal kind of like a common language mm-hmm. that yeah. it just started like spreading after that and then then here we are we can play online with like whoever whatever and like at the flip of a switch now yeah 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 isn't it weird today though like the the kids growing up they don't know that that's really amazing yeah yeah i I have kids now and they're like well yeah of course i'm going to talk to somebody across the world like what what's so important about that that's just how things work (laughs) it doesn't work that way (laughs) it didn't always work that way yeah Yeah. like buying friends over (laughs) yeah no the uh, the the multiplayer was you know like (laughs) Um, like Dave was saying, uh, uh, Goldeneye, and that was you know like you're, the majority of your friends playing on N64 or something like that. But then when you be, when you were able to you know play with someone you know continents thousands of miles away, different language and everything like that, and you're just like, this is this is world shattering right now. And then now it's just become so common that you know everyone's like, yeah, we have friends all over the world on you know PSN or you know like Xbox yeah. Live and everything. And now it, it's still I I still like because we grew up in like the um. The, we were watching as it happened, so to us, it's still like wow. From gaming from here to there, it's yeah, yeah. Like a significant leap. And now, you're, now kids are just like, oh, cool, I guess, and they just don't understand <laughs> that, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stream like high end PS4 games to a phone, like I know, Xperia yeah. Z3, like what? <laughs> Excuse just me. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm still mind. I, I, I have two kids or th- three kids, and when two of them play Minecraft, um. They could they 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 play together on a on a network. So the two of them are working together to build stuff. That's so cool. And wow. and and they kind of get annoyed because I, or or it's, it's weird because I'm hovering around them going, "Don't you realize what's happening here? Don't you realize that you're editing 
a level together? Don't you get it? And yeah. they're like, I don't know, Dad. Just you know, we're trying to build something. Just leave, you know, leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sitting there like this, like, oh, this is yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we're all still shocked when new hardware or even software comes out where we're just like seeing certain things happen. I think that's the beauty of like people that um that you know have started from like like from such a low rendered you know like visual level from like Mario's to now we're just like whoa yeah you yeah. saw it <laughs> yeah my, my dad games with me so um he more for him than me but he even sees the you know like the other uh, craziness that that just followed gaming in such you know short amount of time because it is relatively short. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's before crazy. we move on to the next section, I do actually because like this is spiraling into like this really awesome conversation. Yeah, I wanted to ask: Do you think that y younger kids versus people our age or beyond mm -hmm. are more jaded than the other? Because, Oof. for example, the kids, uh... the kids look at this whole situation just like, oh, whatever. Like this is just always the way it was. You know, this that's all they know of. But, yeah. like, are they harder to impress than people like us who have, like, basically literally seen it all except for the stuff that comes after? Like, the bar is higher, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will say that. Mm. The bar is completely significantly higher now because it's like we started off from something, you know, ground level and we saw it all grow up. So our, our, our expectation level is like way down there. Mm. But then they're just, they, they were born in, you know, well, not. Well, you could say that they were born into like a having everything all like right there already, mm -hmm. you know, done up and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd say most of the older generation or people like us have more of an appreciation or understanding or res or respect for the technology to where it's at today. Mm. And the younger ones can kind of bitch loudly <laughs> <laughs> when they don't get what they want. But there's still people our age too that'll do the same thing. It's just. Mm. It's true, you People like to room. complain about anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird because we, I, I think we're also, uh, like, it's, it's, uh, it's staggering the amount of choice that they have. Like, I'm, like, it's funny because I, you know, started gaming back, you know, it, w with Quake, mm -hmm. and I'm really, really used to there being really only one game that everybody played. Like, there's, like, it was like, well, if, if you're not playing Quake, then you're just not, you must not be playing at all. <laughs> and that, so the psychology was like, there's this one thing, and we can all uh, talk about it. And cause, but the, but really, if you don't like it, you have to learn to like it because this is the only thing. But now, like, there's games that are like half a per, half a percent different than than each other. So your level of like, uh, you know, you really can just shop around and find something until it's absolutely perfect for you. Mm -hmm. And sure. so, uh, but that th the weird thing is that that means though that there's never a, a huge group that is all playing the same game, and everybody's sort of apart and. Kind of, there's certain sections that are into one thing, and certain sections that are into another, and and uh, yeah, it's weird because I, I I keep searching for that one game that everybody's playing so that I can I you know I keep wanting to do that because I, yeah. I like that part of it, mm -hmm. but it does it's certainly not going that way. It's it's everybody play you know there's just so much out there. Right. Wow, that's true. You 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 hit the hill, um, the nail on the head actually because it's like everyone will you know will kind of you know like shift from one you know major good game right out now like uh, like it would be uh, Destiny for this um for this quarter, for this year, yeah. for whatever. And then everyone's on Destiny, and you still, even then, the game has a lot of, you know, uh, Bungie, you know, like, um, develop, uh, you know, Bungie slash Halo um, qualities to it. And you see a lot of people, but they still, you know, will bitch and moan about, you know, like, oh, this is different, this was, you know, like, here, I could see this here, but then, you know, mm -hmm. there's always people going to complain. Even if the product is perfect, someone will still complain. Yeah, yeah. I feel, it, I feel like there's never going to be it's like you can try your hardest to impress, you know, like 10,000 people, but 99,999 will like it. And there'll be always that one guy, you know, obviously I'm exaggerating. Like, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't even like, like it. I don't like it. Like, I don't, I don't like, like it. it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, well, I, I, there was something where they were looking at, they, I read some article where they compared, they grabbed like the biggest haters and then they grabbed their, uh, they found some way to figure out how much they've been playing. Like I don't know if they looked at like their achievements or something like that. Mm. And they'd still played the game like like through and through. They played it for hundreds of hours, but they were like just hating on it all the time. And you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, what do you do? You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's oh, so that's what that really is ridiculous. Then you then you see how you know like people think like there's there's some people that just will want to trash on a game and then yeah. there's people that want to experience it and then make up their own minds but be a, uh, be objective and you know give you know positive qualities to the game yeah, yeah. there's some people yeah, that are just like no bad wrong done yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of weirdos out there too <laughs> yeah yeah completely <laughs> so so what have you guys been playing lately 
Hmm. I can start. If, I can start it off if you guys want to. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Um. So I have been playing Dying Light. And oh, cool. This oh, is, yeah. This is very appropriate of the title of the the uh, the podcast because we're speaking about zombies. Yeah, um, it's awesome. Yeah, Dying Light is a lot of fun. Um, I'm impressed with. I'm actually surprised at how much I'm enjoying the game. I kind of oh, went into it a little bit skeptical because I played Dead Island. And, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I played that and I was like, you know, going through and, and of course that trailer that they showed off of the game before it released was one of the best trailers of anything I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And so when the game finally hit, I was just kind of like, what? Ugh, like, really? Yeah, like different. it was not what you expected. This, yeah. This is, I was, I, yeah, it's the same thing. It's kind of like you go in, you saw Dying Light's amazing free running trailer and you're just like, man, we experienced, we experienced like, Riptide, we experienced <laughs> Dead Eye, you know, oh, man, yeah. quit bullshitting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot so far, uh, so that's the good news. Um, aside from that, uh, I haven't been playing too much else, uh, at least within like the last time I had a podcast. I know I was playing something else, but I can't remember what it was. Um, well, was it Guilty Gear? Oh, yeah, Guilty yeah, Gear. Yeah, you must yes. me about that. Like, Guilty Gear. Yes, Guilty Gear Exard. Um, uh, it's a great game. I just finished reviewing it, uh, so the review is out on YouTube right now. Um, it is... It is being processed on N4G, it should be approved soon enough, so that should be kind of like a big headline thing there. Um, Check it out. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited to keep playing it because it's it's a lot of fun. I like fighting games. Um, and uh, those have been pretty much the big two I've been playing. I've been, I've been trying to experiment with a couple of other games as well. I've been playing a little bit more Shadow of Mordor um, just because, you know, at, in my backlog of games, I just have to, like, get through, you know? Um, Complete. I've actually been playing some Warframe as well. And speaking in terms of indie development, um, I'm just I'm just always every time I turn it on after not playing it for a while and there's like a new update or new things that they add to it, I'm always kind of blown away by what they've been able to achieve with you know just a small team. It's people who are just yeah. you know just passionate about making games. You know, I love I love that. Um, so I want to I want to spread the love to them as well because they they have been busting their asses making this game, and it's a lot yeah. of fun. Oh yeah, wow, that's pretty. Cool. Yeah, it, it's, it's. I mean, the, the indie world is is filled with with people putting in so much work. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. A lot of a lot of really passionate people. Yeah, I feel like an indie developer. They they have they have that love for the game that they'll you know like they'll go twenty three hours working on you know like certain things just to get it absolutely how they like it because they have a mind of a gamer. Yeah. So they're yeah, always yeah. there. They're always there tweaking, tweaking, yeah. and then someone like a, a bigger development company will be like, "Oh, that's fine, that's fine," and then you're just in there like, <laughs> "No, fine, fine. needs yeah. to be, needs to be, <laughs> needs to be perfect." And then yeah. those little, the little attention to details is honestly what grabs a lot of people. And then that indie developer, you know, creates that one game that's a smash hit, and people are just like, "Wow, the, uh, it's different because it's, you know, its focus is on this, 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 and this." And then you're sitting there like, "Wow, this is amazing," because he actually put the time, the effort, and the love into it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the creativity is way out there because they're not necessarily they don't have a marketing group and people telling them that they can't do this or that or that this won't sell or that won't sell. Yeah, oh totally. Yeah. How, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, um, how does that um, since you know you're an indie developer and you just released just uh, you know because zombies, like how are you marketing that? Just on are you doing it on your own or are you just word of mouthing it? Yeah, whatever you can do with a marketing budget of zero is what I'm doing. So, uh, <laughs> it's actually, true. Yeah. Actually, I shouldn't say it's zero. Like, I, uh, I, uh, I just tried a, an experiment uh, with a sponsored uh, post on Facebook mm. the, 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 uh, yesterday. So mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes. But most things are so, like we were talking about, so fluid. And there's communities in, in all these areas that are so big mm-hmm. that you got to really just try a bunch of stuff and kind yeah. of really measure closely how it actually works and then yeah. decide whether you should go further. You know, I've got people that will tell me, you know, put everything you can into Reddit. Reddit is the way to yes. go. You, and then, and so then you'll, you'll you want to try that a little bit and see how it works. And But some people don't get, don't get really great results. There's a certain way you have to sort of yes, be a exactly. part of these communities. And then, but then other people be like, Twitter, Twitter's what you want. Get in, mm-hmm. get on, get on Twitter. Tumblr. Uh, and and yeah, then other people, other people, Facebook, other people will have great stories of just buying ads on on uh, on gaming websites. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like it's all over the place. So you really just have to. I'm I'm at the stage now where I'm kind of doing little pokes into everything mm-hmm. and Which seeing is what what drives the what moves the needle, and. Uh, and uh, and then trying to and then diving into whatever seems to work, mm-hmm. and uh, but it is really really hard. Like 
if you are, uh, I mean, just the nature of the way people behave on uh, uh, with on mobile, anyways, is if it's not in the top ten, or if they haven't specifically seen a recommendation for it, it's it's basically never going to get looked at. And so uh, you really have to get, or, or if it's not featured, um, so you really those are the kind of that's the kind of the holy grail for really trying to 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 uh, blow up as a success. Mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. I mean, when, uh, the, when was the last time you you opened up the app store and just said, "Well, I'm going to browse mm -hmm. for anything." And just see, uh, you know, most of the time, even I, I'm just looking in the top ten, and 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 I really, yeah. if, if I can't find something there that inter interests me, then I just shut it off or play something that I already have. Right. So yeah, it's super super hard that way. So you're just trying to uh, get it in front of people so that that you can sort of pique some interest and and hope hopefully get get somebody, um, you know, starting that 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 chain of a viral sort of thing. Um, yes. And uh, and yeah, but the other thing is that there's so many platforms. Mm -hmm. So like right like probably next week I'll be planning like how you know how how Steam is going to work mm -hmm. uh, oh, and wow. and you know because if if you you go into one platform and you go okay well this is okay I'm I'm not necessarily sure how this is if this has a great future there's always another platform which right. is hilarious because mm -hmm. you can go like because it started on Android and you're like okay well Android's going okay it's going okay well let's, okay let's got to go to iOS Did, iOS is, is going the game okay. actually on Android as well yeah. Oh, yeah, oh awesome. wow! I'm download that then. <laughs> there you go, Android yeah, and uh, iOS people. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's uh, so then you then you move on to Steam, and then you move on to you know maybe like try indie Xbox or indie PlayStation or or something like that, mm -hmm. and then you've got Mac, the Mac Store, and you know there's a whole yeah. there's so many different areas, and uh, that uh, you can always move on to another platform. But I mean, the ideal is that all of them you make money on. So uh, mm -hmm. that, that's that's, and that's not easy to do. So yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, like you, uh, you brought up the the Reddit community and everything like that. It's it's you're right. It's absolutely hard to post something and then it'd be an instant success. You know what I mean? It yeah. has to go through a lot of stuff like that. But I mean, I've seen a lot of success stories on Reddit too. Just you know, like, hey, this is my um, I'm you know an indie developer. Please check it out. And then it hits the front page and it has like over six thousand upvotes and pe like like over two thousand uh, you know comments and stuff like that. And people yeah. just you know like go into it, go into it heavily, and then before you know it, you have your own subreddit, and then people are just you know commenting on that. So hey, there it is. Just <laughs> there to let it you is. know, I'm sure you know already. You have about four and a half stars out of five on the the wow. uh, Android marketplace. Oh, cool! So Check people that are out. eating it up. I'm buying it right now. Just to let there you, know. you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm checking it out right now. Very yeah, so, cool. so some of those big communities they're they're really really uh, like the super super good places to 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 do stuff. I'm kind of circling Reddit. I haven't really dived in. I want to yeah. try to. I'd love. I'd like to be more of a um, informed user. Like. Uh, there's nothing worse than kind of going into a community and then start start posting links of your yes, stuff. Exactly. Be like, hey, what 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 do you mean you're not downloading it? Like, so I, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to sort of become an actual member and an actual user and stuff like that, so okay. that uh, um, I, you know, they actually fit in instead of uh, sort of spamming them because that, exactly. that, that that could work. That could fully backfire too. It really just being part of Reddit, like, yeah, they'll respect that because <laughs> you're gonna have people that are gonna look into your account after you post like, whatever. Be like, wait a minute, this guy's brand been, new you're... and he's just start uh -huh. handling his shit. Fuck that. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. No, it's true. That's the that's the Reddit. There's the people that don't do that. I know they're out there. They're, they'll go yeah. check. Oh, what have you posted? Are you part of the gaming? Or you know, are you part of our gaming? Are you part of our indie? You know, it's just like, oh yeah, he's actually has some credibility to it. All right, let's check it out. People are yeah. weird like that. That's like. Checking out your whole like bio, what you submitted, what oh, you yeah. talk. People, it, it all people put you under a microscope, too, man. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, so, it's great. So, so what else have you guys been playing? Honestly, yeah, so, I've been. Oh yeah, go to yeah. I was gonna say I'll keep it short. Rocksmith and <laughs> Dying Light, which yeah, props. Will it is awesome so far. <laughs> yeah, we've actually me and him have played a, already a bunch, and. Fuck. Again, you no know, the the idea of being able to like jump into your game and then one of your friends that you've been playing with for ages can just be like, "Hey, what's up, Will?" Just jump right into the game, like sick. That's just beautiful. That's <laughs> like poetry in motion, man. It really is. That's the best way to put it. It's yeah. it's you know no words can you know describe before you know it's like you'd have to be next to you. Now there can be you know in Pennsylvania and you in Boston and you're just like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" It's like, "Yeah, let's hang out. Um, yeah. Let's play Dying Light." Yeah, <laughs> I can be in my boxes and be like, "Yeah, no problem." Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
experience. Yeah, that was my largest complaint playing Dying Light. Because like, <laughs> my internet wasn't working upstairs. Like, I could play online most games, but Dying Light just refused to work. But I moved downstairs, and it works fine. But that means I have to put on pants. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, it's funny though, but... ever when we were talking about it. I was like, I don't want to put on pants, man. <laughs> but I did, and it was awesome. It was worth it. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, there, there, wait, isn't it funny when you kind of realize how many cameras are actually in your house, and uh, when you got like tablets and phones and and you know stuff on your laptop, stuff like that, the stuff you do, and you're like, wait a minute, if any, you know, you hear about, like, spying and all these different cameras and stuff like that, you're like, geez, I'd be doing some crazy stuff in front of these cameras if, I, I if they were actually on and, like, working. Well, the thing is, I think <laughs> Dave was talking about, because he has roommates, so, like, he has yeah. to put on pants to, like, go downstairs, because he doesn't want oh, like, okay, roommates. Okay. It's like, what are you doing? I won't, I won't ruin that for them. <laughs> no, that's just come down there, like, that's oh, God, mean. Put, put pants on, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um... I mean, as for me, for um, what I've been playing, um, honestly, I've been, because um, I have a convention to go to uh, next week. It's uh, KatsuCon. Oh, That's nice. in uh, Maryland. And um, I've been working on Raiden from yes. Metal Gear Rising. Yes. So, so sick. The armor is just ridiculously, there's like intricate parts. But um, I have been playing when I do get in some time. Um, I've been definitely playing uh, Resident Evil, uh, the re 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 remake. I don't know how many games <laughs> are in there. <laughs> but um, for the PS4, and it is it is amazing. The uh, the graphics the, uh, are smooth. Texture is really excellent. Um, the uh, the the camera control is still the same as the remake was. So it makes me makes me believe that there is still a future for like survival horrors with the uh, with fixed camera angles instead of you having to go in all guns blazing action shooter. Mm. So I'm like, oh wow. And uh, Brave Frontier. Brave Frontier. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, it's it's a game for iOS and um, Android. Oh, so okay. it's really good. Nice. Yeah. What were we saying? I have been playing, uh, funny, all my gaming choices pretty much, like I have a small amount of choice for mm -hmm. games that I like to play, but all my other gaming choices are driven by my kids. Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> so it's, and it's really funny how I've been playing the, uh, that Lego Marvel game. Oh, it's so oh, yeah. good. Yeah. How is it? And and that game is awesome. Yeah. Like I I, wow. I I used to feel a little bit bashful and like about admitting that I was playing these Lego games. Oh, I bought it. Like totally sure <laughs> bought it. But they're but they're they're great. Like I uh, I really have a lot of fun playing that game. And um and uh, so they moved on from uh, Marvel. Like they played the every you know minute of that game that that they could. And now we're moving on to uh, they're getting into the bat uh, the Batman version, uh, Lego Batman three, mm -hmm. the okay. one in space. And uh, yeah, so they'll, and those are just great. Like uh, everything ab about them is so friendly to kids, and they like you can just you have absolutely no problems just putting them in front of it and letting them see everything because you just know that that, that you know you have a, that trust that it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And they're pretty engaging for adults too. Like I, you know, it's funny. Like I'm thinking like uh, you kind of realize you're inner superhero fan, and you're like, wow, this is yeah, I, I love playing Spider Man or I love playing uh, <laughs> Iron Man or you know. And we'll sit and I'll be like, no, I want, I don't want this armor on Iron Man. I want the other armor. And then you start doing this <laughs> totally to get into it. it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And seeing all of the the depth of characters and stuff, uh, you know, and all the different missions and and uh, yeah, it's super super cool. So I'm a huge Lego fan now. Oh wow, that's, that's yeah. pretty cool actually. Um, I remember they made a Star Wars one, and it's funny that you say that because Lego games are really awesome. You just sit in. The, I remember I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so. When that game came out, I was like, I was bored, so I was just like, all right, I'll download it. And then I played it, and I was blown away. I was more into the Lego game, the Lego Star Wars game itself, than the actual, you know, uh, movie to game, um, you know, yeah, video yeah. game. Yeah. I was like, oh, totally. oh, this is so much fun, and it's so like, you know, it's like uh, a lot of people have been worried about, you know, like um about what they put in front of their kids, and it's so like innocent, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the game, it's very, you know, like not, you know, like there's still technically you know, violence, but it's like it's 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 cute it's violence, fun, yeah. it's fun <laughs> violence, <laughs> it's it's Lego pieces. yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. And then it, it it doesn't it doesn't you know give off that vibe that's kind of like okay, so you know, so these kids could probably get you know like a. Like a you no, know, like a twisted sense of you know, like violence or something. No, it's yeah, fun yeah, because yeah. then you can put it back together, and you're just like sitting there, like, wow, this is really cool, actually. Yeah, it's funny because we were looking at that. You know, the Disney, what's a Disney Infinity? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we naturally sort of looked at that, and it seemed like it was you know, it was pretty close to the Lego Marvel kind of uh, um, uh, stuff. Yeah. And yeah. You, and the kids looked at it, and they were kind of like, I don't know, is that 
you know, the guys should shouldn't they be made of Lego? Like, why why do they look oh, like wow. that? They, they didn't understand it because they were just they they fully accept this. You know, the, with those round faces and the yeah. and the, and the, the the funny two uh, uh, D drawings of of their faces. Yeah, <laughs> and they just accept that that's how they should look. Like they don't think about maybe they should be a different style. Maybe they should be more or less realistic. They're just like, yeah. well, no, that's that's how. The Hulk should look like a Lego a Lego man. Like I don't, you know, and that's and uh, so that so they haven't mean. even thought about that Infinity game. I, I I tried to see if they wanted it this Christmas. I was always putting it in front of them. Like, are you sure? Because I thought they would love it, but they're like, no, no, no. But we're fine with Lego. Oh my god, that's <laughs> awesome! You're gonna yeah. be like, wow, wow. Exactly. <laughs> Save some money. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the Disney Infinity is expensive. My um, one of my uh, cousins got it for her son. Holy crap, those little figurines are just like, oh, these are cute. They're like, what, 15, 20 bucks for like a three Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what? This is ridiculous. Yeah, we, okay. we made a, a little attempt at uh, Skylanders uh, just yeah. to see. Because all, all, the, all the kids at school were talking about Skylanders. So I was like, well, there's no way my kids are going to be deficient in the gaming uh, department. You yeah. the best <laughs> dad ever. <laughs> we're going to go get Skylanders. And then uh, and it just sort of was, was kind of weird, like... It, you know, they, they they got to the point where they played it and they were happy that they could talk about it with their friends and that they understood what it was all about. Yeah. But there wasn't a lot that really pulled them in, like, mm. to, to keep them playing. Like, the whole toy thing was sort of a kind of, it was kind of an effort. It's kind, yeah, but, it's kind uh, of crazy. Like, I, it way, like you said, an effort, way more effort was put on actually getting the figures and, like, playing the game itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, and, and it became like that, that. That's the griefing thing that a little brother will do is just go... <laughs> Not, not knock the character off or something. Yeah. Just the game off and, and so, <laughs> yeah, it seemed like just this weird crazy. thing that totally didn't need to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I, wow, that's I feel the same way about Meebles. Like, I get that they're supposed to kind of be like that nostalgic thing. It's supposed to be exciting. But, like, yeah. literally all it is is just transferring data from a figure into the game. Like, you can do that without the figure. It's <laughs> yeah, sad. Exactly. It's, true. Yeah. it's like, and, it's all marketing. It's all, you know, yeah. visual versus, you know, like, like physical. It's just like, you have this thing now in your hand, and now you could, you know, like, oh, cool, I could put this on my, you know, my, my thousand, you know, shelf collection and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then that's where it sits. It dies there, you know, on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 16 bucks on a little figure, now it's dying on the shelf, you know? I, mean, I got a lot of figures myself. But yeah, I mean, they're not, you know. <laughs> I got a lot of pop figures, actually. I need to get rid of some of them. Yeah, my, yeah. Little, my little snake, Nendoroid. Ah, that's oh. sick! I want to ride in one. Yeah, right? Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, so good. I like it. Let me bust out my model kits now. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with Disney Infinity, it doesn't appear, and I don't, I don't, I haven't really even played it, but it doesn't appear that you can mix the worlds of Disney characters. Yep. Like, we were excited about, like, princesses fighting with the Hulk or yeah. something like that, but it doesn't seem like you can do that. I don't know. Oh, wow. uh, maybe somebody that's played it more knows more than me. But uh, we're, we're, it, didn't, it always seemed like the worlds were very separate. Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't played Disney Infinity, yeah. and I don't want to comment and be like, "Oh, you're, he's, he's talking out of his ass," you know, kind of deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Same here. I don't really know, but uh, yeah. I mean, maybe if we nobody knows, nobody's played it. Maybe that's a sign. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That's that's when you know you know like oh it's like oh we play everything from the iOS to like and, yeah. you know like indie games and everything. How about Disney Infinity? Hmm. Never touch yeah, it. Yeah, silent. <laughs> silent, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, there's, there's been a bunch of, speaking of, like, the different games that are coming out, there's been, been a bunch of them that have come out within the last podcast session. I'll just do, like, a, a quick rapid fire of all of them that came out, and then we could talk about any of them in between that time before we move on to the gaming news. But, um, a game called Grey Goo, Dying Light, Grim Fandango re-release, or remaster, I should say. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 HD Edition, Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 1, oh, no. <laughs> Supreme League Aww. of Patriots, Life is Strange Episode 1, Unmechanical Extended Edition, IDARB, Apotheon, <laughs> Criminal Girls, Invite Only, Kick and Fennec, SpongeBob Hero Pants, and Death Trap. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and so I, I want to speak a little bit about, um, we already talked about Dying Light a little bit. Yeah. Um, Life is Strange is something that I've, I've been intrigued by. Um, one of the people on the podcast, uh, shout out to the 1KK, Kevin Kennedy. He uh, did a review of Life is Strange. The review was, uh, I thought was really well done. So if you guys get a chance to check oh, that yeah. out, he did a video version as well. 
Um, he didn't have the the black only intro when he did that video, so he actually just has like a place like a placeholder image there. <laughs> but um, but you know it, it was it was you know very well written, very well executed in terms of like the, you know the visual representation of things that were going on, on screen. Um, he did a great job, so kudos to him for that. Uh, I'm I am going to purchase the game if I don't end up getting a review copy of it. Yep. yep. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to kind of get my hands on that. It's uh, developed by a Square Enix, if I remember correctly, right? Mm-hmm. That's it's pretty cool. Episodic mm-hmm. kind of game, you know. I think it'll be five episodes, maybe. Yes, five episodes, if I remember. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think last time I checked. But see that. Oh, another thing that um that I've been noticing is that they're releasing games in episodes. Mm-hmm. You know who is? I I believe that which that's, deters me. <laughs> it doesn't really. <laughs> No way. Yeah, like I, I saw the review that Kevin wrote, and and it was really well. Like as soon as I read that, I was like, wow. Like I, I do want to get this because the trailer made it look interesting, and um, the even playing uh, the Wolf Among Us recently, like I'm cool with that kind of story, like or that kind of gameplay design. Mm-hmm. But not when you got four other episodes coming. Like to me, I want I want the whole package. Like give me the whole game. Like I don't want to have to wait. Yeah. Three, four, five, six months, which is also going to lead to your gaming news, by the way. Well. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll come back to this again, but but for me, it's like, eh, like I, I can wait. I'll, I'll wait like a little bit. I'll just play the whole thing later. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's it's also just, fair. It's they, sort of that that, really... that that uh, that sort of Netflix psychology where you're like, well, I want the whole season right now. I don't want to, you know, the, the, the second you got to wait for an episode, you're like, oh, you yeah. know, yeah. you start losing it. Yeah, yeah. It's true which, though. It's uh, which is hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, how many times have you wanted to watch something on Netflix that's already over, you know, in the real world, but you, they only have, like, uh, six seasons out of nine? Like, yeah. what happened to me in Sons of Anarchy? I'm dying to watch more, <laughs> but I can't because it's not out on Netflix yet. And yeah. I'm just like, like, damn it. Yeah, totally. And, and by the time, it, uh, I find, like, on a weekly basis, I found that with Breaking Bad, like, the you, you, there was a time where you, you would slowly lose interest, even within a week, like, within, like... You'd be mm-hmm. super hyped for like three or four days, and then after a while, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah, yeah, it's coming up. Okay, cool." But I would have just powered through the whole thing and been really happy if I had it right then. It's true. No, completely true. You know, like some people like waiting for episodes. I, I just can't say I. I've waited for a game for more like oh, close to ten years. So I can't say I'm. I'm done with waiting. I'm finally yeah. getting. We're finally getting the the damn demo in March. March fifteenth. It'll be engraved into my head forever. <laughs> it's like, it, that's that's the longest I'll ever wait for a game ever again. After that, I lose all interest, hope, yep. and everything. Yep. <laughs> yep. That that also leads into one of our discussions later on. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Waiting for games. Goddamn it. Well, yeah. Are there are there any other games in here that you guys wanted to touch on? Um, off the review base that you um that you know did a quick fire on I. I I really haven't played any of the games, and which is sad because it's you know I'm so into games, I haven't had the chance to. I mean, we only have so much money. That's just the reality. Exactly. That's honestly what it comes down to. Sixty yeah. bucks well, a game, and time too. You know, you only have so much time to play so many things. You know, work, school. All yeah, you only have so much like mental energy to get into stuff. Like you can get in, yeah. you, can, you can't get into everything. And like there's there's stuff where you see and you're like, that is awesome. I see that's awesome. I know that's great. But I just don't have any juice left in my brain to really get, get, get excited about that. Yeah, that's that's ingenious. Yeah, the, you're completely right. There'll be a game that you've been so hyped about, but you're just like, man, I don't even think I would have the, you know like the right mental capacity to even go full force into it. You know, like all dwell into it. All right, you want to know what's really sad? I have Far Cry Four still here, and I, I'm like not even a third of the way through, and I just I loved Far Cry Three. I loved you know like all the DLCs and everything, but I just can't like. There's I, so I, much to do. There's yeah. so yes. fucking much to do in that oh game. My God. I just sit there and I'm like, get, I'll, I'll try to get through it, and then, like, like an hour and a half, two hours. I'm like, all right, you know what? This, I, I'm drained. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let me see if there was anything else here that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Um, I don't know too much about the other games that were kind of listed here. I know Grim. The Finn ones for there. free. Yeah, yeah, he's Apo- free games. Apotheon. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's free on PlayStation Plus this month, so yep. I might check that out shortly. I, I have it downloaded to my PS4. I haven't played it yet though, but it's there. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people are really excited about Grim Fandango, and I actually never played it, so I might buy that because I know it's a, a cult classic. 
Will, Same. you got to. You, you both have to. I mean, <laughs> oh, my God. That game was just like such an, you know, like such nostalgia just like slapping you in the face. It's just like, oh, my God, you got to play it. <laughs> it I, I highly recommend it. You know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pick it up. I, I need to. I nice. just... No, no, no chance to be able to be like, hey, look, you know, it's like I have time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the some of the things going on in terms of gaming news, um, things I find very fascinating. Maybe you guys will too. Mm -hmm. um, Destiny is said to be planning major re content release this fall with actual story. And, <laughs> and we talked about this a little bit earlier in the podcast about like how you know people will have their own ideas about certain games, you know. For example, Destiny, you know, having its its myriad of really great and not so great things about it. Yeah. yeah. And so this has been definitely one of the biggest complaints from people. You know, and you I, know what? <laughs> that was what I wanted you to talk about first because yes. Yes. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I stopped caring like a month ago when I was playing the same damn level for the 50th time. I was like, you know what? I'm good. Like it's, it's, it's been fun, but I don't give a shit. I got too many other games coming at me left and right throughout the course of the year to wait yep. eight more months for more single player. I, I just don't care. Like, good luck to y'all if you keep playing. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean... <laughs> I find yeah, it's hilarious. Like, because... you need, like, like you really need that constant stimulation. Like I think they they they're kind of getting into the model of like their game is a service. Like it seems like they're they're trying to get into like a wow kind of model where they're yep. they're able to kind of constantly push you stuff. But I mean, people can't wait. Like like you say, there's so many other options that you know you like they need to keep you interested. Like you know on a daily basis, right? So. And I think yeah. they're, one of the biggest challenges for developers like Bungie when they're creating a game like Destiny is like figuring out how to tell people about it. And for the longest time, they kept telling people that it wasn't in an MMO. But yeah. everything I'm seeing about the game and playing about the game suggests that it's an MMO, down to the very fact that you have to redo levels with yeah. like yeah. such yeah. modifiers. It is literally an MMO. I don't understand yeah. why they thought that they weren't going to be... like they, they, People asked them if it was an MMO, and they kept saying, no, it's not. But it is. <laughs> it absolutely yeah. is. Like even the oh, way, yeah. even with the way down to the raids. Like you can't. There's no matchmaking for raids. You just have to find people and figure it out from there. This is literally an MMO. Like exactly. It's, like, uh, it's, it's so like, annoying. Yeah. It's like trial by fire. It's like where the hell is everything? You know. It's just like <laughs> this sounds like MMO because if it was like a regular shooter game, you'd realize that there's like objectives every ten seconds popping up. Like oh, you need to follow this. You need to do this. You need to uh, and do like, that. And like actual story elements, like, like real cutscenes and real involvement with characters and real like yeah. actual interactivity with the environment aside from. Just a typical, like, hey, generic character, you have made it to the the area that you thought you were going to make it to. <laughs> like, True. Uh, yeah. That's my I, frustration I, with it. I'm, I'm hopeful that they will do something interesting with this because I still play Destiny every now and then, but <laughs> I'm, I'm also, like, not even holding my breath. Like Me neither. I think we've all just given up on that. I think we're just kind of <laughs> like, all right, we'll wait. We don't even, we don't, we're like, you know what? If it comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> um, and this is something else that I find interesting in the gaming news is that uh, Nintendo is planning on offering lower price software titles. So they're kind of experimenting with some different pricing models for their games. And I find this interesting because Nintendo is notorious for like releasing first party games and never dropping the price of them. Or if they drop the price, maybe by $5 in the course of three years, like... It's always it. <laughs> it's always it. And I, I find that really fascinating because, like, over time, you have to figure out that you have to get with the times and get with the trends that are that are happening at the time. And Nintendo, I think, has been the most stubborn when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's kind of like they, they have a certain, like, uh, they obviously have a certain mojo of, like, the the type of game that they create, right? Like, and... and and they'll make they'll make stuff that everybody understands is really good, mm -hmm. but it's like the market knows that. Like all the developers out there know that, and it's just a matter of time before. I mean, you can't have millions of developers all trying to do the you know trying to grab the those those Mario players or grab those those uh, the players of classic Nintendo games mm -hmm. and not have them actually make progress. Like eventually, everyone's going to be like, well, yeah, we're you know we've kind of got that thing figured out. And Nintendo's sort of sitting on the side, being like, "Well, no, we've we've still got this thing. We've still got all this this uh, ability to make these games that people are are love." But eventually, that could pass them by. And I think they gotta 
kind of modernized a little bit. Like mm -hmm. hopefully they're. Uh, I think that what, whatever model they're 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 kind of using is probably good for you know we won kind of days like mm -hmm. five six years ago. Mm -hmm. But it, I don't think it works now. There's just way too many choices. Yeah, it's true. Probably. That's when when people have many options in front of them, they'll they'll either do two things. You know, go back to you know what they rightfully and truly know. Or they'll start experimenting and expanding and checking out a lot of things, you know. Mm -hmm. And it looks like in this case, every there's so many options out there that you don't even remember Nintendo a lot of the time, and you just go forward and try to pick at that. Yeah, and the the other thing is that um, it's funny. It's like it's probably like this on mo. It's it's it is like this on mobile, but probably a lot like this uh, in the PC and, and console, or at least getting there. Is people are you know like two ninety nine is like exp People talk about that as being an expensive game. And mm. and like the the price expectation that people have now for getting something good is really low. Mm. Um, like when you know I, you read on the forums of certain like uh, sites and, and people will really criticize a game that's like three ninety nine over a two ninety nine dollar uh, game. That extra yeah. dollar is like is like a big deal to people. So I think that the, really the days of being the days of like thirty nine forty nine fifty nine dollar games that are at the Mario sort of level. Um, as good as those games are, and I love those games, but you know, there's going to be a time when those prices just don't work anymore. Yeah, completely agreed. And I think and we're at that point right now. It's like the quality of, people, of those yeah. games are really high, but at the same time, it's like I already know what I'm getting into. I already know what this is. Like I've experienced, I've experienced something very similar to this already. You know, what are you going to do to kind of capture me right now? You know, yeah. so like games that come out at lower price points like that that have high quality, like I'm. I'm all down for that. I think I don't think every game should come out the same price. Yeah, yeah. I, I without a doubt, everyone's um, so used to that staple six uh, fifty nine ninety nine price. When as soon as it comes out, mm -hmm. and then you're end up paying with taxis. You know, it varies different people uh, places, but like like in Boston, it's like sixty three, sixty something or something like that, or sixty four bucks, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you always get you know you you. But when a title comes out, you don't even have to ask the price anymore. It's always going to be sixty dollars, and you're just kind of like, okay, cool. And then you then you get there, and then someone will surprise you. It's like, oh no, it was a uh, thirty nine ninety nine, and you're like, whoa, you know, like, yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, I can eat today. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like when there's a surprise in, in in price drop, it makes a lot of the consumers happier too, because mm. it just means that oh, they're looking out. You know, like if they release a string of games at you know like a, a smaller price for you know high quality games, they're just gonna they're gonna fall back like oh. This gaming company released, you know, four different things. So now we have to, you know, like purchase, you know, like that because it's like it's very well done and everything. And one of the things that I, I've seen happen a lot, especially this this past year, is games will come out and then maybe two weeks later there'll be a sale on Amazon, for example, for like ten or fifteen, sometimes even twenty dollars off. And oh, so, they come. And like I saw Drive Club available last year in December for thirty dollars. And it just mm. came out in October, so it's not like it was a significant amount of time that passed. But obviously, the game it was had also a lot of tanking problems. right then. Yeah, like yeah. if it launches and it has like issues, like I've seen that more often. Mm -hmm. Where you get those special sales after a week or so, mm -hmm. and then they might bump the price back up too, just to try and recoup some of that money. But oh, they definitely did. <laughs> they definitely did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have picked it up that then. Oh, me too. Bucks. I was really? thinking about that because looking at the game now that it's been like fixed, like it I know it took so a while. Awesome. It took a while. Oh, yeah, you know, but... it'd be a great app right now if someone you know like develops an app, you know, like where it you know like you you download it on your phone and then it gives you an alert when like certain games that you've been looking at for a while go on sale. Mm -hmm. I think that's, oh wow! That's it. That's a I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move all that out and let. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea for an app, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, and so you guys know that I'm like super excited about Metal Gear, so I had to put this in there. Yes, it's fine. Completely laid on us. <laughs> There's a possibility that the Phantom Pain will come out sooner than we thought. Yes. Yes, um, there's yes. a possibility. I'm not going to say that it's for sure. How soon is soon? You know, some people are saying as early as June. <laughs> oh, Shit, and, I got to get on it then. Damn yeah. it, I, I'm still, I'm still on Snake Eater. I'm and, still there. <laughs> and that's the thing too. Like I, I was one of the people that convinced Dave to start getting into Metal Gear. So he's been playing yep. the other Metal Gear games up until what we have now, and he's been, he's been really actually enjoying it a lot. One um, was awesome. Like half of two sucked, and three, <laughs> and three's been great. Yeah. 
Three is amazing. Oh, yeah. one thing, since you're um, already playing it, um, just letting you know, Ryzen is completely, completely different from the uh, the Metal Gear. You know, like sneak or sneak around and like you know tactical espionage. This is more like a like a crazy ninja hack and slash. But I think it adds a little bit of charm to it. You know what I mean? That's hmm. you know that's personally my level. Also, I gotta drop this out there. Um, did anyone see in I think it was a Taipei um, uh, gaming, like in I think China when they released the two that was like. Like the, the uh, same design from uh, from Rising uh, yep. Metal Gear Rising One, so I was like, oh, there might be a two memes. But, you <laughs> did so, I did see that. One I did see that. Said that it wasn't that, and so like I'm really upset about that because so I would love so to see sad. a sequel to that game or like originally what Metal Gear Rising was supposed to be was the prequel mm-hmm. to to Metal Gear Solid Four was supposed to take place in between two and four, where you discover like what happens to Raiden, why he's all of a sudden a cyborg, you know what happened with the Patriots and with Sonny and like how he had to retrieve her like I really really I was, really wanted to see that and then it turns out completely different and like it, it has its charms and it has its high points don't get me wrong but then I was I, I'm, I'm a huge Raiden fan so like I keep wikipedia his like page and everything and like I read about it I read about it and I'm like this would make an amazing game yes how he Absolutely. comes back from like you know like the, uh, the whole um incident in Manhattan, how he goes back, how he has to, you know, like, adjust to real life, and then he realizes he can't. Yeah. So he does security work, and then, you know, like, he gets captured in the, you know, the Patriots experiment on him, remove him, you know, like, everything from the, the, the lower jaw below, yeah. gone. Yeah. Like, damn. Like, I, 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 I need that to, I need to see yeah. that. I need to, like, it's, it, oh my god. Uh, have you played any of the, uh, the Metal Gear, uh, Metal Gear series? Uh, for Ben? Oh, yeah. I, I, I have it. I, I bought, uh, I think, it was it, Metal Gear Solid 4? On the PS3, yeah, and I played a little bit, but it was like Probably uh, confusing. it was like uh, yeah, like gameplay cutscene, <laughs> <laughs> gameplay cutscene, <laughs> and then gameplay cutscene, and then so yeah, I, I, it just you started to take larger and larger breaks from time when you came back to it until I didn't come back to it. So yeah, yeah. No, I understand. That a is- lot of they have the the first time they jump into a Metal Gear series. If it is you know if you haven't stuck with it for a while, that that is their f- number one complaint. Yeah. It's like all right, twenty minutes of gameplay. What the hell? This cutscene's like thirty minutes long. You yeah, know, Metal Gear yeah. Solid Four is notorious for that. Like that, I think that was the the biggest perpetrator of that whole situation. Is like when I play it, like playing through it again and again. Like I could get through these sections so fast that the cutscenes were longer than the gameplay. And I was like, yeah. all right, this is a problem. <laughs> it's true, but then it, when you get into the story mode from, like, like Metal Gear Solid, yeah. then you kind of, like, number four was, like, a treat for me because it's, like, yeah. more it's game. More, yes, it was yeah. when we go, oh, everything got addressed so nice and neatly, and I'm just like, sitting there like, this is great. Mm-hmm. I would definitely recommend you um playing number one if you like, you know, like old school PS1 games. It's yeah, one it's, and it, three. It, it, I mean, it seemed like what, what I got from it, too, was that there's just so much story and backstory and oh. stuff that I didn't, that I didn't know about yeah. that... Yeah. And you, you got to sort of get yourself up to speed with that. Mm-hmm. It's funny how I, I tell yeah. all the games. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. That's why I tell everybody about movies. You never want to jump into like part three or four if you haven't seen one or two. Yeah, yeah I'd be like, like watching no the Return form. of the Jedi first or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the yeah. fuck is going what the fuck on? Is this? <laughs> what are these little bears running? <laughs> they have magnets <laughs> in their hands. Like, why are they able to? <laughs> it's like, okay, why does that guy have a sword and no one else? You know, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> one guy. <laughs> Yeah. Why is he part robot? You know, it's like it's <laughs> never jump into that. But I mean, I would recommend you know Metal Gear series. So bad. What, what what I did get from it though was just I, I was kept thinking like how did they get all this work done? Like oh, this yeah. is so much work, yeah. and it looked great. Like it yeah. looked awesome. It was certainly like really really cutting edge for the the hardware. And it was like I, this is just you know you talk about how long it takes to make a, an a, an animated movie like a maybe a two hour animated movie. It's like they easily did that. Plus, they made a game. Like, it's really, really <laughs> Plus, they made it interactive. Yeah, absolutely. It blows my mind to the day what what developers have been able to achieve with even limited limited hardware. You know, PS2 yep. days. There's still games that like look impressive from PS2 in, yeah. in one way or another. You know, Snake yeah. Eater. Snake, Snake Eater looks Eater, impressive yeah. from PS2. I don't care what every it is. Every strand of grass. You can see every little <gasps> strand of grass. It's true. Like. I think it's also like I said. Um, the uh, the, uh, the the creator of the game, uh, Hideki Kojima. He's he is he, that's his love child. Like that is his like his child. You know what I mean? Like he put every bit of his soul into it, and you can see it resonate whenever you play it, whenever you turn it on, and when you talk to the fans of the game. Oh my God! It's just like they're so passionate about it because they see the uh, the uh, the love that went into it, and you just absolutely go f- nuts into it. 
Yeah. Everyone at home, cool. get excited for Metal Gear. Play the, the yes. previous games. Get into get it. it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get, get this game to sell billions. <laughs> <laughs> real. real. Yeah, I will say that. Like, you have enough time too to go mm-hmm. through one through four before five gets here. That's plenty of time. It is. Is there is there any way? How, how do you? Um, like, I I totally don't know. Um, how do you? Uh, emulate? Like, do you emulate those games? Can you get them on current hardware? Like, oh, kind of but I I got the uh, the Legacy Collection for PlayStation Three, oh, so okay. it has like all of them on like two discs. And... Mine's Metal Gear One, unfortunately. Oh, nice. <laughs> Well, but, um, like I said, um, you can. I think but I don't know I think if the it's Legacy on the collection store. does have Metal Gear Solid One. I think they were. Was yeah, it? there were two yeah. versions that they they released. There was one that didn't have it. That was like from like I guess a year and a half prior to that, and then there was one that had just all of them. Really? The one, yeah, the one that I played had all of them, and I actually played the original PlayStation controller like version yep. of Metal Gear Solid, and it was all the old school graphics, and it was difficult as shit. It's so hard because you're <laughs> limited really to hard. what you can do. <laughs> like, How the hell the did we pass that kids, You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like you're sitting there like right now you have like a like a, like a a you know very you know, mind you know like very creative gaming mind and everything. You're like Haha, I'm going to blow through this and everything. You're sitting there like how the hell did I pass this as a kid? <laughs> how the hell? <laughs> this is ridiculous. And uh, one, one of the things I wanted to, to touch on in the gaming news is that uh Persona Five reveals its trailer and gets yes yes and so this is this is the point that I want to make it it surpasses even games like Final Fantasy Fifteen in terms of like viewership in terms of interest you know way before Final Fantasy did so it got one million views before Final Fantasy did more people are excited about Persona and as someone who hasn't really played the other Persona games before but seeing that trailer I have no idea what's going on in it but me, it looks either. really cool it looks yeah. interesting. So, I, I can. I, I up until like last year, I was the exact same way. I started yeah. playing it only recently. Yeah. Um, played Persona Four. That was a mistake and a half because I was even more confused at that point. So I went back and I played Persona Three. So I was just like, all right, I'm getting a basis here, yeah. but still, I worked backwards. Not a good idea to do, but sometimes <laughs> you're like, okay, it could work, couldn't work. I couldn't get two and one because those are like a PS PS one games, I think like that. Okay. Or something like that. So it was pretty cool. Like I mean, it's you know, like, you know, typical protagonist anime, like, you know, you're going into like um a TV in number four, you go around into dungeons trying to say you know, solve mysteries and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. I actually liked it. But number five looks to blow everything away. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a huge Final Fantasy XV fanboy since like I was, like I said, I, I've been waiting since I was a sophomore in high school for this. And I'm at a, I'm in college right now, I'm twenty three, so pretty long time. Yeah. Yeah, Close so, to seven, eight years, yeah. So. so are you are you more excited for Final Fantasy or Persona? Fifteen, what are you nuts, man? <laughs> 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 Completely, I, I'm more excited for uh, Final Fantasy fifteen. I mean, I understand because there was such a drought of, you know, like, information on Final Fantasy fifteen. It killed a lot of its base for fans and everything. But since... Um, but since um, Tetsuya gave the reins to uh, Tabata, which was the uh, creator of Parasite Eve, the third, uh, the third birthday, and um, Final Fantasy Crisis Core, which are two gnarly games that I recommend anyone picking it up, it ma- gave it such like um, like confidence in its game itself. Now there's information every time there's like you know like a, 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 you know like a gaming uh, convention or something like that, and like that trailer release was such huge news. It, like it restored the. Um, some of its fans, not all of them, but some of them, mm-hmm. and now people now um, they release at the end of Type Zero, um, which is also you know a game coming to PS4 in March. So mm-hmm. recommend you get that. It um it re- it um it showed at the end like you know the actual trailer for the demo, mm-hmm. which takes place in the um the uh, the, the 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 one of the uh, the continents, and there's many continents. Mm-hmm. So you're going throughout a lot of things. And you're like basing it on one little demo. That little demo is like the glimmer of hope that can turn, you know, like Final Fantasy 15 into what it needs to be, what it was when PS3 was coming out. <laughs> so that's how bad it is. Yeah. It was supposed to come out like a year after the PS3 came out. Never freaking came out. Never Next even gen. showed its face. No. Yeah. Now, now there's such the the demos coming out. This is huge for me. This is like. This is this is like you know like what everyone used to make fun of me for waiting on this and like this is it this is the this is what will make or break I'm pretty sure yeah yeah the, yeah it's like well, now, now, now the pressure is so high like uh, you guys remember it's Duke Nukem forever oh my god yeah like, yeah yeah it just yeah, can never possibly live up to it so hopefully hopefully it can Ugh. yeah no, I, I'm, ironically you say that I was talking to John St John the uh, the voice actor of um of Duke Nukem and oh, nice. he was we yeah, yeah. On the podcast. 
Yeah, I'll try to actually. Yeah. Yeah, just get him to say stuff. Yeah. Just... Oh wow. <laughs> he called me the first time he met me because I was uh, working at uh, Yomacon 2013 in um two years ago. He calls me. It's kind of like my you know like the handler interview. He just calls me and he starts wailing on me as Duke Nukem and I'm like this is the best verbal oh. abuse I've ever gotten in my life. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like it was amazing. And it's like he was such a nice guy and then when I met him, he has such a great heart. Um, there was uh, my first year of working at Yomacon. There was this, um, you know, a mentally handicapped um, child. Uh, well, he was a gamer, and he loved Duke Nukem, loved John St. John. He was there to meet John St. John. It was, it was like Friday. I won't forget that. We were all drunk off our asses, like the handlers are drunk as hell. And so John St. John comes by, and he's like, "Hey guys!" And we're like, "Hey John!" And like the brothers outside, and he's explaining to me what happened. And so we we tell uh, John St. John. This is after hours. This is like. 10, 11 o'clock at night, John St. John goes out of his way, goes to the brother's hotel room, meets him. The, the, the guy couldn't even believe, the, uh, the, the brother couldn't believe it. And he leaves him in tears and he's happy and like, wow. Yeah. And man, you know, you when you have like such a beautiful view on you, it's like, it, it, it emulates. And I'm like, wow, he, he earns so much respect from just not me, just a lot of the handlers too. It's kind of like, He's a very good human being, just in general, you know. And he's Duke, so yeah. <laughs> can't, can't lose with that. It must boggle the mind because you what you think of the mindset <clears throat> that he must have had when he took the job to, uh, initially. Yes. It must have been like, what is this little game? You know, what is this video game business? Well, you know, and then look what it blows up to. Right? It's crazy. Yeah, you can you can bring someone to their knees just from like pure happiness, just because yeah. of like, what it is that you do. You know, it's uh, so it's, it's a magical moment. You know, it's awesome. Exactly. It's and it was beautiful because it's like. You're the Duke, and you still have fun with it too. It's like it's amazing because he even said it, we were doing a panel, and he was like, "I had no idea what I was getting into before." Well, then I voice acted, you know, like a couple games like in um, NFL 1997, 1998, oh, or yeah. something like that. Oh yeah, he, he was doing. Yeah. yeah, he was doing a lot of the. Um, the you know, like, voices. Yeah, yeah, no, not announcer voices. A lot of the player voices. Oh, the player voices. Which was crazy back then. Yeah. So then um, he got Duke Nukem. You know, he, he took an interview. I think his agent was like, hey, you should check this out and you should try it. And he was like, all right, cool, we'll try it. And then after that, the rest is history. But he was saying going into forever, mm -hmm. it was the pressure was high. Un, un, oh, yeah. Then it was mentally unstably high. It was, and that's what crushes a lot of the games. People can thrive under pressure or they just crush the, you know, the weight of the pressure. Mm -hmm. Well, think how many times they must have brought him in, like over the, what? Yeah. 25 years of development or whatever of that game. <laughs> you must have, have been like, like hey, we, we need some more. It's 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 12. You know, it's year 12, but we got a little bit more. Don't worry about it. Just, this is the last time. Oh my god. <laughs> He's, no, it was it was really really cool. Yeah. I mean, and and speaking about kind of like the magic of gaming and the magic of of you know creativity and passion. Um, one of we were talking about Metal Gear Rising and Platinum Games is actually responsible oh, yes. for that game. And you know, I think I respect them as a developer because they're they're Japanese developers who who put you know fun and solid mechanics above anything else, and I really appreciate that about their games. Oh yeah. Um, they release a, a free eight bit game for Bayonetta two to continue promoting it, and this kind of ties into what we were talking about, like promotions for you know, oh, yeah, yeah. And how they how they choose to kind of get the word out about their game. And I unfortunately do not have a Wii U. I just got a text message from someone else who has been on the podcast. I'm yeah. training Mark Blue. He just said he got a Wii U. So I told him <laughs> as soon as possible to get Bayonetta 2 because I loved Bayonetta 1. Oh, I loved, loved it. Um, and I think it's really, really awesome that you know developers still have this mindset that they, they, they're willing to do something like that for a community. So like, that speaks. This is that a speaks game that's free to everyone. You can just go on a web browser and just play it. Um, there you go. There's nothing better than that, honestly. You know, yeah. like... Just a lot of when developers go out of their way for that, you know, like big developers, it's huge because it means that they speak to their fan base more than more than just the numbers. More than and just, it's just the numbers, more than just the publishers. Yeah. And then you're sitting there like, whoa, you know, and like that that creates a bond between gaming. Well, and I'm not saying all gamers because some gamers are just there to relax from a hard day at work mm -hmm. and just play the game. They're not interested in the community or whatever. That's fine. That's cool. You know, I would rather people do do that than you know like go off and like do crazier shit. You know, mm -hmm. and like. But that's to the people like us that are very involved in like gaming, gaming communities and stuff. That speak volumes to us. I'm like, wow. Yeah. People do that. I'm like, wow. Yeah. You gotta love it. <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would definitely want to bring that to to people's attention that that's a thing. You can go and check that out. Uh, definitely do it. The agenda that will be on blackonyblog.com will have a link to that, so you can check that out. Um, and this is now moving on to our final section of the podcast, which is hot topics. Now, 
before we get into any other guest topics, because I'm sure you guys, other guys have some things you want to talk about as well, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk a little bit about Because Zombies. I want to kind of get a, a good understanding of what it is so that people at home can can see whether or not it's for them or not. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, like I said, you know, it's got really good reviews so far. <laughs> well, it's a game that is for everyone. Everyone <laughs> should buy it right now. No, I, I mean, <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a uh, so uh, I was you know my, my first exposure to mobile one of the f- the first games I ever played was a game called Plants vs Zombies. Yeah, and, yes. uh, I don't know if you guys probably played that, but uh, that was a game where gameplay wise it was a tower defense game, um, but the the zombies were they weren't repathing for your uh, when you put down barriers, mm-hmm. so they weren't like you know traditional tower defense games you place down a few uh, a, a bunch of barriers, all the zombies kind of. Um, uh, or all of the the enemies repath, and you basically it's kind of this this I find it kind of a boring thing where you're you're endlessly just trying to get them on this this kind of run around, yeah. um, and uh, and it gets but that was the first one where they, you know you had all these different types of weapons and all these different types of things that you were doing and they were all kind of silly and, and funny and and weird and that kind of thing and you're trying to f- come up with creative ways to to kill these zombies. So gameplay wise, I had kind of had that in my head. Like that was really fun. I really, you know, I wanted it to be a little more hardcore and a little more, um, you know, kind of action oriented and 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 stuff like that, mm-hmm. and a little more gore and a little more, you know, kind of fun ways to do stuff. Um, and then, uh, but then, you know, I, you know, I watched things like Walking Dead and uh, uh, oh, yeah. you know, d- different nice, zombie nice. kind of uh, movies. And there's always that point where there's something really visceral about about uh, the whole zombie culture, which is the zombies are coming towards you, there's stuff in between, and you're just you're kind of watching them destroy oh, stuff and yeah. get closer and get closer, and you're, you know, so it's a really natural kind of tension. feeling and a natural tension there, yeah. and so I thought, like, okay, well, I, you know, how could, I, how could I sort of mash that all together? And so what, what I did was uh, is, uh, create, create uh, it's a little tower defense game where you are the the tower that you're defending. So it's it's the main character. He's a he's a father trying to get get, get through a city to try to save his daughter. But oh, okay. all the zombies are trying to get you. And every level starts with a bunch that are sort of unconscious in their kind of zombie weird sleeping kind of state. And then they wake up, and you have a certain number of weapons and stuff, and a certain amount of money to place them. And you have, you have you have to protect yourself from mm-hmm. from from these guys coming uh, coming to get you. And there's different classes of zombies. There's some little fast ones that are really hard, and there's some big guys that are really slow but really hard to bring down. Mm-hmm. And you get, you know, there's 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 a, there's a whole bunch of different weapons that you can combine. Like, you know, you want to you might want to freeze the freeze the guys first before mm-hmm. you shoot them, or and then you or you might want to poison them and get them to run away, or you might want to there's there's attack dogs. You might want to stick a bunch of attack dogs on them. Oh wow! Or or or, or, or stuff like that. And so, but it's it's up to you to decide how you know how creative you want to be. Eventually, you'll have so many different weapons that you really it's up to you to decide how you want to use them. Mm-hmm. Each one can, is pretty good when you combine it the right way and when you when you do you know right the right things yeah. with it. And so, yeah, it's really just trying to make you give you that feeling of of the zombie you know that 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 zombie attack is happening, but at the same time, let you be really creative and as. You know, as uh, and really personalize how you want to want to uh, defend yourself, mm-hmm. and uh, and kind of make the gameplay not. There's not a set way to play it. Like you can sort of do whatever you want. Nice, yeah. nice. Holy crap! That's so, that's is, that's pretty. That's a lot for an iOS. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It's been a crazy year. That's for sure. And I, I, I've been. The, I'm the only one that's developed it. So like, mm-hmm. I don't have a team or anything like that. So, so it's been all, with it, all the art as well. Uh, yeah, well, most of it is heavily modified stuff that I had that I bought. Okay, okay, so that's still chill. Yeah. No, so yeah. I didn't build I didn't build the stuff from scratch. But if I had, uh, I yeah, so I don't know. I, I'd be I'd probably be, be like just a pile of dust. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, so yeah, it was it was a huge amount of like programming work on my part and a lot of a lot of uh, sort of fiddling with the art to try to get it to work right. But in the end, I think like I'm really, really, you know, like sales. Sales are one thing, and they're, like you, you want to try to try to get as much as you can. But I'm just really, really happy with the way it's turned out. And if you told me a year ago that this is what was actually going to be fin- like the finished product was going to be like, yeah. I would have been blown away. Like so, yeah. you know, the, like I, I'm I'm doing a lot to market the game now, and uh, 
usually you, know, you get you get it in front of people and you get people to see it and people are like wow this is what you know what is this yeah and so that that's really the really the challenge now i think is um i've i've accepted that if you see it and you play a little bit you'll probably like it so i just mm -hmm. need to need to get people uh it, sort of that discoverability problem is just trying to get people to to filter through the noise and kind of get yep. a little moment of people's time well, I I just bought it. I will be playing it. I'll be I'll be completely honest to everyone at home about what my thoughts are about it. Oh, cool! Um, yeah, yeah, cool. I'm hopeful of it since it has already high ratings, but I'm not gonna let that exactly. you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna let, let that the bar, take yeah. away from my own personal thoughts about it. But I'm excited to play it. Yeah, sure. It's it's yeah, it's, it's super cool. It's more it, it's designed for. You know, it's kind of that mobile design uh, kind of method where you are you you got about five minute little bites, mm -hmm. and it's really easy to walk away and and come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's the kind of thing where you know what I really wanted you to be able to you know take your phone out while you're on the toilet, play a quick yes. game, and then and then and then leave, or play it in in, in the lineup and you know at the grocery store or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's trying to get you know kind of. You know, a little bit higher level uh, graphics. It's not a 2D game. It's not it, like it doesn't have that sort of flash game look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's got like like uh, higher level graphics, but it's something that you can so you can get that experience, but you can just sort of do it anywhere, like uh, at the doctor's office or or wherever yeah. on the bus, and have a quick I, game. I, what you say is really really important too, because it's like um, you can have a quick game while you're playing, which is. A lot of people, you know, they don't like to be like a long extended level of, you know, like dragging it out. But like quick games in between, you know, like um, like like, like you said in the in between the grocery office, uh, like the the grocery doctor's office, or just the, even when you're on the toilet. Because let's be honest with you, ninety ninety percent of I, you know like gaming happens on the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, or on the train, oh. you know, the bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's stupid. Just like a lot of the time when you you're just in there, you're not gonna read a can of you know like aerosol or something. You want to. Yeah. You got your game. You want to play, <laughs> and you're like, and you're, but it's true. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's what it was before. You know, you want your left butt cheek to go numb and be like, oh, I think it's time to go. You know, <laughs> you get a few levels within you, and then like you're like, oh wow, this game is cool because it becomes addictive. Yeah. It becomes you know something else. It becomes you yes. Know, fun. So so there's sort of a like a, a journey that the players on and uh, try. You know, you you um, so hopefully people people will get into that. You know, it's a lot. It, it's a lot about me. Like I'm a father, and uh, you know, it's you. You. It's really easy to kind of go, oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to do a, a story about a father trying to help his kids. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that, so it's a, a lot of that kind of uh, the, those elements work into kind of the story of it. Mm -hmm. Story's okay. pretty light. It's mm -hmm. pretty much. It's it's pretty. Uh, um, it's something that a lot of zombie fans would be familiar with. You know, mm -hmm. you know. There was an accident that created a bunch of zombies, mm -hmm. and now you have to save the world. So it's it's mm -hmm. something that's pretty familiar, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and and there might that's probably going to be like comfortable for people. Like there's, I'm not trying to innovate in a he in heavily in a really large backstory, but yeah. it is but it is something that is uh, it's kind of a new take on on like sort of zombie yeah. tower defense, I think for sure, yeah, and uh, something that yeah I think it's yeah it's uh, it's something people I, will I, like. I think that'll yeah. speak out to people too because it's like yes. the idea of, of you know saving someone that you love type of thing. Like for example, the Walking Dead game, it was like you weren't necessarily the father of this child, but it was still that same feeling. I don't have children, but like I was still very much connected to yeah. that that little girl as an experience. And so like, oh I think yeah, people will totally identify with the idea of like protecting your own, you know. So I yeah, think yeah, that it's like hard, hard hard hardwired in our brains that that's what we should do. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. Exactly. It's, so it's uh, yeah, there should be all sorts of stuff, and it'll be uh, being updated. Like I'm working on updates now. Mm. There's uh, all sorts any any feedback people have, I I really try to respond. There was a I had a review uh, uh, a small review done uh, for the Android version a while back, and so there you know that that brings up some ideas, and so uh, which is good because it gets you of, thinking, right? How can yeah, people... and games are, games are like services now. Like there isn't the, this whole idea of uh, you know release it and then wait for the sales is is kind of done. Like you you have to be. Yeah. You have to plan like six months after release and all the different things you're going to do. And, and six months yeah. later, it's like a completely different game at that point. Mm -hmm. There's so much new stuff. So, so that's the kind of thing that that's the big challenge right now is, is, is marketing, getting uh, sort of put your, keeping your finger on the pulse of what everybody thinks of the game and rolling that into updates and, and, and new stuff. So, yeah. How can people yeah. give you feedback? Uh, they, there's, uh, there's always the developer. Um, email on, in the app store and stuff like that so yeah just just send me an email like uh you leave it as a review although uh uh you know uh i'm because i'm reading those all all, all the time oh, that's, and 
That's got to be and, like nerve wracking. <laughs> well, <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's hard, but it's it's uh, the the if I was to say the biggest challenge of this entire process was getting like honest, lots of honest feedback. Because mm-hmm. if you think about being a one one person making a game. You, you you take your game around and and you show people and people people's first reaction is wow you made this yourself mm-hmm. this is incredible this is amazing I can't believe it I love it and you're like <laughs> I know I know I know but what do you think about do you want to keep playing or are you you know is there anything about it that you don't like no I love it I love everything about it mm-hmm. and and then what you go what is your criticism you know it's <laughs> like you need that to you know yeah and, and people are trying to be nice like and 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 they're obviously really impressed by the fact that you actually did this but. It's 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 a whole other thing, and I think it takes maybe more experienced gamers or more experienced, maybe even get developers, to really start kind of drilling really deep into stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been really hard because everybody's busy and everybody has their own projects and everybody has their own their own uh, games that they're playing, and nobody wants to play a game like for the fifth time the, of the same level and and see a small iteration. So but so any any really good feedback I just love that so if people can tear it apart and then send it to me I, I that would be super appreciated absolutely See, look at that you gotta love when a person can you know like especially you look like you can take criticisms as well so I mean like you know obviously as long as you're critical and you you, you write a good uh, you know criticism but you also expand on how they can make it better no one just yeah, wants totally. to be like you suck alright All right, thank yeah. you but how can I make it better <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. And and it, it's tough in the in the, the sort of the app store world is you know you never really know who your customers are going to be like you have an idea and you have a, a thought and you know you're you're targeting you know the certain group but you never know you know you want to make sure that it's wide enough that that you, you're casting a wide net mm-hmm. but uh, so you never really know who you know you've got a, a lot of different sort of personas if you will uh, that are the people that you're targeting and so you know you've got to have a really wide range like. I always dealt with the problem that the game was way too hard, and mm. I, I think in certain cases, some people still find the game way too hard. Mm. Really? And so then you, you know, you, but you, you're there's constantly that struggle of like, if I make it much easier, am I alienating right. the people that the harder core users? Because, uh, and then, but it's just that that seesaw balance. So you, then you try to incorporate sure. other elements, and you know, it's it's, but it, it, it's a it's a challenge. Yeah, with, absolutely. With that wide of an audience. And I I find that. I know that was going to definitely be one of my other questions is like, what have you found to be the biggest challenges? And those seem like fairly legitimate and fairly like it makes sense why this would be, you know, a challenge in the first place is because you still have these different audiences looking for different things in terms of like mobile experiences. You know, you want people who are interested in playing something to like really get into it. But also there are going to be people who just only want to play for five minutes at a time. Like, how do you appeal to both of those types of those people? You know, there's yeah, it's very sure. different mentalities in gaming. And yeah. so... It, it's, I, I have a lot of respect for the idea of like trying to like put out a game on on mobile devices because it's it's a tough market. It's a tough crowd. Oh man! It, yes. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Everybody I talked to was like, "Stay away from mobile. What, <laughs> stay away." Really? From mobile. Yeah, they're like they're like Steam. Get on Steam. Steam. Yeah. Steam is what you want. Get away from mobile. Yeah. And uh, but I really wanted to make a I really wanted to make a, like a, a touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a touch uh, a centric game, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, I, 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 in order to get it on Steam, I got to do a ton of stuff to sort of PCify it mm. uh, yeah. to get it ready for the PC. But um, but uh, yeah, I was really I was something about it. I just wanted to get it on on mobile. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, like there, it, it, there's a whole bunch of different ways to think about it. Where if you say because uh, my game's not free to play. There's no in in app purchases or anything like that. Like you're not pestered for to, to nice. pay. Nice, to, nice. Not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, yeah. Rather but, put once and then you just have that you know ability to be like everything from here on in is all gamer skill. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. And and there's but when you say that you go like okay, well, who, so who's the type of person that's going to pay? Who's who's in the app store going to pay a couple of bucks for a? Uh, a tower defense game, and you go, well, it's probably not a casual user, it's probably not somebody that is just not even a gamer at all, so then you think, well, maybe I need to make the game a little bit harder to satisfy that type of person, mm-hmm. um, but then the other side of the coin is, well, there, you know, uh, you know, how many people, how big is that group, and, and so you start to, your mind kind of starts to go crazy in, tra- in thinking about all, yeah. of, all of these different potential sort of uh, uh, customers, and so... Yeah, it's just a huge balancing act, and I, I think so far for revision one, it's actually I think it, it's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. But there's, yeah. um, th- I think the the challenge will be to 
add new layers of complexity to the game that are optional, mm. that will okay. kind of make ma make the harder core users interested and in, like trying to get these sort of games within the game, uh, yeah. right? Um, and then, but also things that help the casual user to sort of just kind of get bailed out if they if they have problems. Mm. So, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And then, of course, implementing it all yourself. Like, it's great to have the idea. But then you're <laughs> yeah. like, I okay, you know I got to do gotta, it. I got to program How are you going to do it? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so you get, definitely have to have time that is like, hey, this, side, this time is set aside for ideas. Mm -hmm. And then I need to have a clear head when I actually implement them. Because if I'm constantly, like, having these thoughts, then I'm never going to ever kind of complete the feature. I'm always going to be changing it and changing it and changing it and yeah. changing it. So, yeah, you just try to... You just try to get it done fast, get it out there for people to use, and then mercilessly kill it if nobody uses it, and then come on to something else. So um, yeah, until you find the right the right mix. That's that's amazing that you can actually that you still want to keep going at it no matter what um, you know what the reviews are. You can still you know keep going at it. That that shows a lot of your character too because it's just like that's not gonna bring me down. I'm gonna make a good game for gamers out there everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there's a lot of stories of, of other companies that are like, yeah, we had a really rough launch. Things didn't go well. We were yeah. and then we we did this. We did one thing. We did another thing, and then now it's uh, now it's 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 uh, selling great. So true. Um, and with, with the App Store sort of discoverability is such a hard problem that you 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 can't really take sales as uh, like a comment on the quality of your game. That is true. That is completely so, true. So you have to really keep that in perspective because I think at, at certain points it's really easy to sort of say, oh, um, you know, the game, the maybe the sales aren't so high. Uh, I need to radically change the game. But that might not be the case because if it's if, if it's not on the front page, like no one's going to find it anyways. Right. Yeah, it's true. No, no, completely right. Because like, anyone can you know like make good, great sales for like a time for like a small amount of time, and then all of a sudden, no more sales because the game is is crap. You know what I mean? But I mean, yeah. if you go in there, you know, fully ready to go, and you know, still updated and stuff like that, then that the longevity of the game itself will, you know, pay for itself. Yeah. 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 Totally. But do do you guys have other uh, guest topics you'd like to incorporate into the podcast before we move on to our final bits of of the podcast? Mm -hmm. Little no, topics. Little topics. No, no I think uh, yeah, I think we no. touch base on a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think we're. Uh, I'm so excited about this podcast. <laughs> this, is, this, is <laughs> this is a good podcast. I like it a lot. Yeah, and so. I guess this this kind of goes into the same idea of making decisions about your game, um, and you know we were talking about Final Fantasy, we were talking about Metal Gear, we were talking about um, we actually hadn't even talked about the Last Guardian, but that actually goes along with this. Yeah. <laughs> when when do you think is too soon to announce a game into development? So again, Final Fantasy fifteen was announced in oh seven, maybe oh six even. Wow. And the game is still not out. Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem. Was the last Guardian announced? Oh my God, Last Guardian was announced probably a few years after that. Actually, yeah, it was like 2008. Because it's, it's been a while. Yeah, it has. And so I'm curious. Yeah, I, it's funny. Now. I was just talking to somebody the other day about Half Life Three. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh my and, God. It's another and, thing. Uh, <laughs> and that that hasn't even been announced. Nobody's no. even said anything. But still, people are just just uh, racking their brains over it and going crazy it's and coming out. You know, it's like. Is what it is, even... When are you were announcing it, that's the first question. Yeah, exactly. Last Guardian was 07. Oh my god. Oh, the same time as 15. Last Jeez. Guardian was 07, so uh, that's been that long. Well, the other one, Duke Nukem. I, I need to know this now. Yeah, How yes, long? you and Jordan, you and Bauer, you were both very, very, very much long. excited about this game. <laughs> and it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was such a disappointment. Oh. It, it is a sequel to the 1996 game Duke Nukem 3D. Wow! It came out in 2011. That's 15 years. Damn. Wow. For real, damn is right. <laughs> damn. Yeah, that, 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 that's got to be tough. Yeah. And you can just imagine though that the pressure's so high that they're like, yeah. you know, they, they start out making a game and then, and. And then you know maybe you look at an E3 or you look at like uh, GDC or something like that, and you go, okay, this game's not good enough. We, the pressure's on us so high to be to have this great thing. And then maybe they switch game engines, mm -hmm. and they sure. go from like something to Unreal One or from Quake to Quake Two or something. And then they keep going. And they go, holy smokes, Quake Three's out. We're 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 behind again. And then you know constantly the pressure of making such a great game. 
makes them uh, always have to be so great, but you know the, 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 they're taking so long that the, the game world is sort of passing them by as they develop the game. Right. Yes. So that's, that's got to be so rough on so many different levels. And I feel for them, you know, it, it's <laughs> like they put out a product Half-Life. that wasn't indicative of what they wanted the full product to be. I know that's the case because as a, I'm not a game developer, but like I'm someone who's passionate enough about the industry to know like there's certain things that you, you make decisions about. And I, I know that they were like, like, we have to put this out because we've been saying we were going to do it for so long. Like now people are expecting it. But what we have right now isn't what we want to show people. Yeah. What do we yeah, do? Of so you know, yeah, they take that they- risk. There must come a point where you're like, okay, we're about to destroy this entire franchise by yeah. releasing this game. Because True. the expectations are so high. So it's got to be scary because you're like, well, you know, when do you want to destroy all of our fans? Like, when do you, you know, like, I, yeah. like it's so. It with Sonic. Me, whatever Duke Nukem is exactly. kind of gone. Yeah. It, this is why it's a, such a it's such a critical part for a Final Fantasy. It's make or break with this one, you it know? Really it's is. like. They're it's like, pissed off a lot of people. They're still pissing to this day. They're still pissed off, you know. That, that game came out way back when, and they're still bitching about it now. So like everyone can say, oh, they could just make a Final Fantasy VII remake, and then you know all their problems go away. And uh, and I realize it's like it's not that easy. Yeah, it's not that simple as just you know like oh every developer get on this. You know, it's like it's not because that's like that's like kind of going backwards when the company wants to move forward with more fresh ideas, more something different you know because everyone in their right mind would want a final fantasy 7 remake but they did tease the fuck out of us with that though that is their fault God, that, that, that that ps3 technical demo it was a tech demo and people went off the hinges and were like oh my god final fantasy 7 is remade if you would have and asked everyone, back then if that was a verification that it was coming i would have been like hell yeah it's coming obviously and the, yeah, we're still waiting on it to this day <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah it's kind of it's kind of the problem with single player games is that they take so long to make mm. that yeah. The gaming world passes you by, you know, like it's just gonna happen. Like you, ha- it seems like it would have been way better for to come out with something and and find the hit that people want the sequel for, and just update that so much that people basically get kind of the sequel mm-hmm. uh, just through updates that are re- like small bite sized things, so yeah, that yeah. people are getting what they want. But if you if you put that much pressure on yourself, you just can never ever live up to it. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. That's like like. It'll it'll either sink or you know it'll flow and skyrocket and pierce the heavens. You know, you one never knows that. Yeah, it's and like but what, what 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 is? I mean, they must think like what is the chances of lightning striking twice? We had this <laughs> runaway hit. You know, yeah. are we going to have a runaway hit again? Like, yeah. or are we going to ruin the whole thing? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. My background music just came on. <laughs> That's my my theme for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. But um, it's true. It's just like. Like like what you said, Ben. It's like, can lightning strike twice? Can this be, you know, twice the hit that it was back in the day? Or, you know, it's stuff like that is so hard to just be like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm gonna make this better. Or, you know, it's going to be developed better. But it's just like, sometimes people just like, they want it to be um, a cult classic from back in the day. Not a yeah. brand new PS4 kind of a financial gain which I respect them for that because anyone can make that like Resident Evil like don't get me wrong I love the Resident Evil franchise but just like how many remakes like I was saying that this is the re-re-remake to the re-re-remake of the director's <laughs> edition to the remake to the original you know what I mean but here's it's the like, thing though it's like people are lo- eating it up people they do so, That's, they just smoothed over the textures and then they, they smoothed over the graphics made the textures a little better you know the puzzles are the same the same thing you know what I mean and it's just like people are just buying it well, and then there's the a sign on my like, forehead that says I bought it you know yeah, it's like it's so, and sometimes, <laughs> oftentimes it's worth it to, to put that out because like there's still a it generation is. of people who never played it because it was on GameCube you know so yeah oh well th- that's sad to say because it's like there's a generation that old, that when it came out on GameCube, it's like, dude, the GameCube's not even that old. And I'm like sitting here, I'm like, damn it, now you make me feel older. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, it's tough because there's got to be a certain amount of in the developer's head too. Like everyone is confident. Like th- those guys are confident. They really, you know, they they know what they're doing. But there has to be an element when you develop a runaway hit like that. Yeah, in the true. back of their mind, which is like, that was completely luck. Like, we totally didn't mean to make it like that way, but people loved it. And so then it's, when you put yourself yeah. under the pressure of having to do it again, you're kind of like, well, geez, like, you know, without, there's a huge part of why that was a hit that we don't really understand. So 
we been doing it again. We're, we're super scared now of like you know kind of whether we can re re uh, recapture that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's so. kind of like mm. it's like it's like the um, the scared ability. You know, it's like it's like I'm so scared to see if this will even work anymore. Yeah. Sometimes people it'll it'll work twice or it'll blow up in your face. You know. Yeah, and they had the problem like uh, like remember uh, with Doom Three, where uh, they. Um, they in in development you could see they were like well we're we're not going to innovate the game and and create something that is that is uh sort of you know for gamers of today we're going to give you a graphical update on old doom gameplay and it's and we're going to and and people totally didn't want that they wanted like the doom something universe fresh, something with uh with something fresh and so that must also be a problem where you're like well you know they they love this game the 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 game world has moved on, so we have to add all these other elements. But we don't even know if they want that because they love the old game. Mm-hmm. So you know, you got to pick and choose, and I'm sure it's really tough. Mm-hmm. And so, sure, no, you just want words right out of my I'm mouth. glad yeah. I haven't heard much on Doom recently. That's still coming, <laughs> by the way. It is. Yeah, this that's is another Doom game. That's been long yeah, yeah you're right. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, hopefully they're t- like um like what Ben said. I hope hopefully they're you know putting all that into consideration that they want you know not just new graphics. They want you know, something that will appease the gamers of today, this gamer's generation. Yes. Because there's a lot about the Doom universe that we need to know about, like the new yeah, stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. 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 And so, <laughs> like, this is... What else? It's like, well, there's a portal to hell. Is there still a portal to hell? <laughs> really? <laughs> the real, seriously? This is, we're still going at this? It's, you not, know? it's, not, it's not closed yet? <laughs> You'd think by now someone would attempt it. At least. <laughs> like, you finished the last game and you left the portal open? What are you doing? Right, that it makes no sense. <laughs> and so yeah. it's, this, it's like this leads into things. one of my, yeah. my final questions uh, for topics for the podcast. Um, what are the biggest driving factors for purchasing single-player games and multiplayer games? So, you know, Harold Balls, for example, uh, Mr. Ben... Uh, you yeah. said before a lot of it kind of boils down to whether or not it will be appropriate for your children. Yes. Um, but what else? What else would you kind of consider in terms of you know driving factors? Uh, I I actually think now it's kind of weird, but I think um, it I like it when it's short. Hmm. And uh, like uh, I think about so imagine like uh, GTA versus Portal. Yeah. Uh, so I played Portal and I felt really good about it because I didn't feel that guilt of not finishing it or I didn't feel the guilt of like leaving a whole bunch of game that I had never even touched. Mm-hmm. I was able to go from start to finish and, and I was able to get really engaged and, and then I finished it and I felt like, yeah, I completed that experience and I feel really good about that. Mm-hmm. When I look at a GTA or something like that or a Skyrim or anything like that, yeah. I look at it's just sort of really daunting and makes me kind of feel bad because... I know that I'm going to play like one percent of the game, and I'm going to feel like I, you know, you know, I missed out on so much. And there's and um, so I kind of like it. I, I, I now I look for things that are kind of discrete, uh, little little experiences. And actually, the Lego Marvel game was really good for that. In that the the single player experience was was really really quick to to get through. Mm-hmm. And then they had this. It, they did did it really well. Now there's the sandbox kind of world, open play kind of part. And so I'm free to go in and go out whenever I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so right. yeah, like the, it's a, it's kind of a weird thing. I never would have thought that before. I would say I would want the experience to be actually shorter, but there's a satisfaction and kind of a little boost you get from saying, "Yeah, I completed this whole thing." Mm-hmm. That, but if the game is a hundred hours, then that's never going to happen. <laughs> so, even true. though I'm going to get like extra value, like I'll be like, "Yeah, I got a hundred hours for sixty bucks versus twenty hours for sixty bucks." I'll still take the twenty hours because I I'll never make the hundred. So. Mm. That's what yeah, it comes down to again, you know, mental energy, time, you know, it's just like yeah. 20 hours, you'll, you'll feel so fulfilled and you're so, you'll be so happy. You'll be like, damn, this is an amazing game. I got attached to the uh, storyline, to the characters. It was great. They need to make a second one versus 100 hours. You're just like, what, like, like what's happening with me, with me and Far Cry? It's just like, where the fuck am I going? You know, it's just like, <laughs> what can I do at this point to just be able to be more into the game? And you're just like... Like you said, it's harder to come back with. And you, once you take a break, you'll take a longer break. After that, you come back to it. Then you take a longer break, and then an even longer break. That's what's happening to me right now. It's staring me right in the face, and I'm just like, I'll play it later, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's sort of a thing called like they call it like the paradox of choice. Uh, yeah. If you have mo- the more choice you have, mm-hmm. the more you believe that any choice you make will be is you're making the wrong one. 
Like if you have 20 options and, and, and you go, okay, well, I'm going to take option number five, because you saw the 20 options, you are less confident in the fact that you chose option number five because you saw so many other ones. Mm. And now, so you, you have that feeling that you are probably doing something wrong. And I certainly I, felt that way with, with things like Skyrim and that. Yeah. I, would, I would go follow my instincts and I would go do something. But the whole time I'm doing it, I'm like, okay, I'm wasting my time. Why am I doing this? I should be getting yes. back on the critical path. What am I? I'm wasting my time trying to find this herb or trying to, you know, exactly. do this thing. Yeah, and so the, the feeling isn't like a free adventure fun. It's like I, I always feel like, you know, I'm being You're silly. more stressed. Like, yeah. You're more stressed on I need, to, I need to get, you know, like I need to do the side quest to get, you know, like, on, like, like you said, onto the critical path. And then you're just like. Crap! I just wasted three, four hours just doing yeah. nothing. It's like, damn it! Yeah, I'm, you know, and like, now I'm lost. I don't know where I am, and I don't know what to do. And I'm a little bit of a completionist, pie. just a little bit. You know, I, I I find myself very, you know, drawn to like getting as much out of the experience as I can. So like, very oftentimes, like to answer the question for myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, driving factors for me is is definitely. I don't want to say length. I want to say kind of engagement in the experience. Like a game yeah. could be like a hundred hours long if it really wants to be for me. Yeah. Um, but as long as it's doing a really adequate job of like engaging me during that experience, I don't mind. So like I can always jump back into it later on when I, I know I have more time to play it. And and you know some 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 games try to like make it out like Destiny for example. They add I hate to keep using this as an example. No, it's okay, it's okay. Keep they on, add man. artificial length to the game by making you do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And that that in itself doesn't make the game longer that just means you're doing something again for the sake of like getting a little slightly different thing out of it and so yeah you know to, to that point um i think a length matters in the sense of like feeling like you got a good value out of it but i think the engagement and the fun factor um trump trump that more than anything because you, when you play fun. a game you want to feel invested in the experience and you want to have a good time playing it and you want to feel like a sense of accomplishment playing it so um, Bingo. I think those are really important for me as a gamer, um, and also like for multiplayer, like you know, it's it's got to have balance. I feel like for multiplayer games, games that that don't strive in really having a balanced outlook or a balanced you know approach, or games that don't update and they just yeah. kind of keep things stagnant, um, mm -hmm. those are tr big turnoffs for me in terms of games. I I completely agree with you. Um, there's another one that I think for multiplayer, and this is gonna sound a little weird, but. Mm -hmm. How is the how is the story with another player? You know, like I'm very involved mm. in like like dual pe you know like co two friends yeah co op you know yeah. story heavy uh, multiplayer games. I like that kind of stuff. Like mm. there used to be games where I would just in like and not like you know kind of like oh you're playing it then you're playing it. No, I mean like we're co op playing. co op. Yeah, where like the story is designed for we not you. You know what I mean? Wasn't Evil kind of like that? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. it was. I remember that because like um. There's one uh, Resident Evil Six. Uh, mm -hmm. You can choose two different characters. You always have two different choices. Like you'll on the main path, you'll go one way, and then your friend will get separated, mm -hmm. and you have to you know sniper support him mm -hmm. while fighting off you know like you know different you know like uh. Like I think they did monster. actually a really good job with that in Resident Evil Six. Yeah, yes. I have my own problems with Resident Evil Six overall, but like it's, the co-op aspects of it were really well. Gnarly. Like what happens to um to Piers, one of the characters at the end? You yeah. become a bioorganic weapon, and you're helping Chris out, and I'm like. <gasps> This is awesome. That was this, very cool. That, that was, was insane. Cool. I was sitting there like, this is very, very well done. And then after that, I just, I have more problems with that game than, you know, our positives, but that yeah, was a point, you know? Yeah. It was great. Do any of you guys play any uh, Minecraft? I don't. I used to a lot, and I would just, uh, for me, it was more like a, I am wasted out of my mind with my friends, so let's go build random things kind of game. And it yeah, got to yeah. a point where I stopped drinking and actually played it. <laughs> And then we actually enjoyed it, but then after a while, it just seemed the same thing. We played for like yeah. six hours straight, and I was like, "All right, I, I, I feel like I'm wasting my life. I need to do something else." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really into it a while back, like uh, maybe a month or two ago, and to the point where I was like, you know, losing sleep and playing it a <laughs> <Yes>! lot. Yes. <laughs> but then in picking up, picking it up now, I'm kind of like, wait, wait a minute. This is this is the same. So yeah, yeah it's kind of kind of interesting. There's a game called The is. Forest coming out soon that's, that takes the idea of Minecraft but like kind of modernizes it and brings it into like I guess a more grounded experience. It's like, you know, obviously more graphically polished than Minecraft and yeah. I think it might have actual more story elements to it. And yeah. so I'm, I'm really interested to see what that game's going to be like. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because I think a lot of companies now, maybe a year or two ago, uh, or maybe, maybe about a year ago, 
a lot of companies, I think, started picking up on this as a real phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see in the next maybe year or so all of their kind of stabs at that market. Yeah. So I think the whole I, market yeah. of like building your own stuff and, and kind of surviving in the world, I think that's going to become like really, really crowded. And But there will be some really great stuff that comes out of it. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. And like to play – sorry to keep mentioning Metal Gear again. <laughs> okay. Metal Gear is also playing around with this idea of like building and like adding to your – so you have a mother base, for example – and this is where you you have like your own dedicated area yes. section, and it ties into multiplayer. Like people can kind of come into that and explore around, or they can invade your mother base. Like you get to build different areas and sections to your mother base and like make it your own. So I think I I'm with you on that one. I think you're going to see a lot more bleeding from that kind of idea of like you know I guess tower defense or building your own yeah. types of things going on with other elements in the games and you know just like with like rpg elements are implemented in games all the time now you know it's like yeah that's true it, it's, it is really interesting seeing kids pick that game up though like that mm -hmm. that's one thing about minecraft it's just pure magic is when you give it to a five-year-old and uh they i mean that you'd have like teams of developers at all these different companies trying to figure out how to get a five-year-old interested in stuff but yeah. then you give them this weird looking thing like Minecraft and they're like, I completely get this and I totally understand it in about thirty seconds. Yeah. And yes, and they're true. and they're and they're having so much fun. So yeah. it's it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So Will, we're gonna we're gonna hang out on Met on Metal Gear when it comes out, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Hang out on Metal Gear. Oh my god, I'm gonna be. Uh, that's the one game I'll probably put like no lie six hours daily into that. I'll lose so much. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna lose a lot of sleep because of that. Game. Do, do any of you guys have uh? Does do, uh, do any of you guys have a Vita or or I know anybody with one? And do you remote play and stuff? Does that so? Oh, I'm glitchy. <laughs> not even just that. I I've remote played before. Um. I've done it when like some friends were over and my roommate were hanging out and I actually just really wanted to get this last trophy on Infamous. Um, and I just put in remote play, like did that while we were all talking and they were like watching TV. Um, but other than that, I, I honestly can't say I play my Vita too much. And I think a part of that, like the remote play works fairly well for what it is, but playing on a Vita and using certain controls that are made for PS4 is a little bit clunky. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I can't for the life of me understand why Sony has not allowed people to use their controller, their PS4 controller on the Vita. For real. Like, whether it's just for playing Vita games or just remote playing the PS4 in general, games. It on, feels in general. better. It feels better, the grip and everything. That completely. controller yeah. is so well designed and so well implemented. Why would you not want more people buying it? More people yeah. using it. More people integrating that experience with the, the portable, with the console. Like People will buy a console if they feel that connection with it, having that controller, you know? I don't yeah. understand. Because yeah. yeah, I, I, I just have an Xbox One, and I um, and I, uh, I but I hear so much about the the about the Vita and the remote play and and, and the PS4 that I'm really tempted. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how the, you know how that actually worked in the real world, like what people yeah. really thought of it. Uh, it. It works well, I think, on my connection. It, it there's not really an issue with it working. It's just a matter of the comfort level and a matter of like it being well implemented enough in the controls to really make it worth it. And so yeah. I, I wouldn't say it's a must-buy or a must-have feature, but it is nice to have. It's convenient. To me, it's, yeah. It seemed like one of those things where it would be like if you are a person that can't, that, that, that has problems uh, finding time to play, that it kind of maybe will get over the inertia of like sitting on the couch, fire the game up, get, get, you know, and if, because I like, you know, if I, I, I would play for 10 minutes in bed or, or, or play, you know, on the, like, on all my spare time. Mm -hmm. But the idea that you have to be on the couch to play the console game is, um, so I kind of like that idea. If I could play anywhere in the house yeah. and kind of do that kind of stuff. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's um, it's a little different. I, I feel like it could be my connection, you know, I, mm. it, that could probably be on me. But um, I feel like it's, like you said, the comfort level on the Vita versus, you know, like a PS4 remote is completely different. Mm -hmm. Um it's funny that you bring up Infamous because I've remote played Infamous, mm -hmm. and remember when you're trying to when, when you're, you're trying, trying to drain to... energy? Yes. Oh my god, it's so... that's oh my god, so it's annoying. horrible. I'm sitting there, I'm just like tap tap tap. I'm like, damn it, you know? Oh, my it's finger's like... not warm enough. Like, what's I know. Up? I... <laughs> and I'm just like, dude. And then after a while, I'll like absorb it, but I'm in the middle of a battle and I'm dying. I'm like, this is this is shit. Yeah. You know, for me, that's why I think it's glitchy on that end. I'm just like, ah, whatever. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy though. That that, that that's the future. That stuff's gonna be. Like it's, they're, they're going to perfect it at some point. It'll be like it'll be pretty awesome, I think. Yeah. After that, we'll be playing around, you know, like the PS6 in our pockets or something, or the Xbox, you know, yeah, seven thousand six hundred and fifty-two. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. just like <laughs> it's going to happen. You know, it's, it would. It it'll be interesting to see if there is another um, generation of consoles at all. Like yeah, when I'm, you think I'm about wondering. 
I'm where you, when you think about where these devi- where where mobile devices are going to be, like what what's a what do you need a console for in a couple of years? Yeah, that's a scary thought because I, I you know PC gaming it's not one of my strong suits. I mean, I play Steam here and there, you know, I, I get some games off there, but like I don't know, there's something comforting about you know going into a console, just hanging on the couch, just playing the game, and you just get so sucked into it. The remote feels yeah. perfect in your hands and stuff like that. I don't what know. More nostalgic than anything. What do you guys think of all this head-mounted stuff, like uh, VR, uh, VR oh. and and AR and all this kind of stuff? I've played around with uh, the Oculus Rift a little bit. Um, Did you really? Yeah, I was at PAX and I got a chance to to get hands-on with it. They, I mean, That's here's nice. a funny thing about it, man. Like, there there are some of these outlets that are like much bigger press than I could ever like think of being right now. And like, you know, while I was there, you know, I was still getting treated with, with respect from a lot of the people that were there, a lot of the, you know, PR, a lot of the developers. Awesome. And I told them straight up, like, I don't have a press pass. Like, I didn't, I'm not big enough to have a press pass to PAX. You're yeah. like, don't worry about it. Like, you know, we already see what you're doing. Like, come over here, you know, That's we'll help, we'll help you out. So, like, That's I, had cool. to, I had to get into like a... I had to go in like after like a bunch of different people, but like I was able to get into the VR, the, the Oculus thing, and like experience that a little bit. And I thought it was really fascinating. I thought it was really interesting, and That's I'm really how looking it feel? forward how did, like, to like how it, like it? oh, it's lightweight, it's super, it's like comfortable, it doesn't feel like there's anything on you. But like, you know, I didn't do as much as I should have been doing with it. Like I still had it on. I was just kind of like looking around the environment, but it did have the camera set up so that like I could go around here and like actually peek around corners and so oh shit so it's not just kind of like you know staticky it's actual you know dimensions like, and stuff like that. exactly and so like the idea of having that kind of interactivity with playing certain games like if i could play dying light with that kind of thing going on i think i would probably piss my pants but <laughs> it would yeah. be it'd be so incredibly immersive like it would it would it would add a, a layer of depth to the experience um that i think can be really cool it's just my biggest gripe with it is like there's no way this technology is going to be inexpensive there is no way yeah and that's my biggest thing right now it's the, like consumer like consumer friendliness like what what is that at the interesting thing like, is uh i just bought a galaxy note uh four like the, the big galaxy note four and yeah. they have that they have the galaxy gear uh headset thing i see, remember seeing that and that seems like because i feel the same way about about the oculus where it's there's a, a sort of a barrier to entry where you know maybe it's a couple hundred bucks or so, but uh, even then there's cords everywhere. Yep, and like yep. I've, I've got the first generation one right here, and um, That's got a there's bunch cords, of cords everywhere. Yeah. It gets a little hot, you know, yeah. stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, of and um, but the 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 phone one, it, the, it's got battery life issues and stuff like that because it's a phone. But mm-hmm. there's you just put it on and 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 then you're ready to go. So if if the that seemed like it solved a whole bunch of problems because you you know that now it's the barrier to entry is even lower because the headset part is just about like a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks which isn't which is you know that that, that I can see buying that mm-hmm. um, and if yeah. you can game with that that would be pretty awesome absolutely and oh, occupied reality is also really cool because it's like real world scenario but yeah elements added into real world so like I can see both sides of like how VR can be really awesome and AR can be really awesome I know. Yeah. I'm I'm really I'm really hopeful and excited to see where this goes, but I'm also very like I'm very cautious about it because like you know how's it going to take off? Like how are you going to get this in people's hands? How are people going to how are we interact with this as a regular device? You know how many cores are people going to be using on this type of thing? Yeah. And how many cameras will have to be set up in order for AR to actually work properly? How many sense like the logistics kind of have me worried. Exactly. You know, yeah. like it's 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 also, you know, another question to ask is, you know, obviously pricing, it's always gonna be how much is it gonna be? But the other thing it is it's gonna be like like what you were saying, like how the cooling's gonna work, you know, how mm. if it's gonna overheat after hours of hours because wait, when you're into something, you don't play for an hour or two. You play for six, seven, eight hours, you know? <laughs> especially on a yeah. day off, you're gonna play for like twelve hours. And if, <laughs> and if there, you have a helmet on, you're actually peeking and going around and you're running and stuff like that. You're gonna get so much more out of it because you're gonna get a workout while you're playing the games. There is a fatigue factor because I I, I play Half Life. Like Half Life supports VR, and it, in in uh, with the with the the Rift, uh, the Oculus Rift One, like the first dev kit, I can really only play Half Life for about like half an hour, forty five minutes oh, with man. it on, and then it's just too fatigue, much. Like, yeah. And but that's where because look is is your aiming like like you yeah. have to look at what you want to shoot at. Mm-hmm. The the mouse can override a little bit, but that gets a little weird. But yeah, uh, yeah. But it's uh, it's a whole other level of of Im- the immersion factor cranks up the fatigue factor, That's and so, uh, true. so yeah, it it stops being you know um, 
it starts being a lot like you can't, you can't really play for that long. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I would, plus, I would plus you agree can't see that. anything. Like you're you're reaching out for your keyboard yeah. and like, you can't <laughs> see anything. You're like, where you the fuck am I? You're, you're knocking over your coffee and you're doing all sorts of stuff because like you just you you don't know what's going on. Like, it's easy with a controller. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot yeah. easier to be like, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true. Like. I, I personally, I, I have a soft spot for like ARs and like BRs and stuff like that because like growing up with Metal Gear 2, it's just like you hear that all the time. That's so You're true. You're like, I've logged 300 hours in VR training and I'm like, that's yeah. so cool. I want to do that. You know what <laughs> I mean? That's so true. Yeah. It's just yeah. like you want to go out and do that. You, you want to try that. You know what I mean? It's just. Yeah. And, and that's a whole other thing with that. Um, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about kids not thinking that the internet is amazing, but I, I, I let the kids put the, head, the headset on. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like, oh, cool, this is really neat. And um, and they, they don't think that anything, like, I'm like, what do you mean? This is, like, aren't you excited what? about this? Like, don't you understand what's going on? <laughs> they're like, yeah, I, I like that. I like that place that we went to. I like that. Yeah. And that's it. And you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> do you know how much work it took to do that? Yeah. And it's a, but it's another thing that may, that is like, uh, that they're just not, that they're not going to think is any big deal. And they're going to look at the good old days as, when they tried that weird VR headset that Dad had, you know, and uh, meanwhile I'm thinking that this is there couldn't be a more cutting edge thing, you know. It's true. It's whatever. Everything you just said, it's true. It's, it's like you're like, oh my goodness, this is, you know, like this is this is the epitome of it. This is not going to get any better than this. Yeah. Like, like, oh, I guess. I mean, they're probably going to make something better within the next year or something. You're just sitting there like, she's absolutely right. And it's like, Every year we outdo ourselves technological. It's technologically, so you're you're thinking this is going to probably end up being yeah. a lot more better and a lot more, you know, more sensible in two, three years tops. You know what I mean? And there's there's so much more accepting of it, and it's interesting psychologically that they always talk about it as, oh yeah, can can we go to that house, Dad? Can we go there? Yeah. And, uh, okay. and it's like, oh, that's uh, that, that's kind of neat, just how they represent it in their mm -hmm. minds. Like, can we go to that spaceship? Like, I really want to go there again. Yeah. And. Um, cool. Yeah, like where they don't say, "Can we play the game?" Like for them, yeah, it's like, "No, I'm just, I was at, a, I was in a place. Like I want to go there." That's so, yeah, that's kind of funny. That's really interesting. Um, is there anything else that you guys wanted to add into the podcast before we we bring it to a close? I mean, obviously, I wanted to give you guys a shout out. We obviously we were talking about um, because <laughs> zombies go, go guys go check that out. Check yes. out some videos. Check out some yeah. impressions. You know, figure out if that's for you. Um, it's and if you. not even then, spread it out. You know what I mean? There yeah. might be someone else. It might not be for you, but it might be for someone else you know that would actually enjoy it. So exactly. yeah, yeah, I'm spreading sure. the word. It's Yoru. You have a you you do a lot of uh what, what is it they call it? Uh <laughs> <off screen>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I, I wanna give a shout out to you first of all, because uh, obviously we met because of your cosplay. Um, yeah. but you're doing your, your metal gear cosplay yes. soon. <laughs> so would you like to tell people a little bit about what you do and where they can find some of your stuff? Um sure. Um I personally, that I, I don't know, I have a different view on cosplaying than most others, and I'm not trying to sound like a hipster or anything, because that's the first thing you hear. I have a different view on this, and it's kind of like, oh, here comes the uh, the, the <laughs> ceremonial rant, you know? It's just like, for me, I don't have like a like a cosplay Facebook page or anything like that, because I, I am a firm believer in, I want to just have fun dressing up as another character from my favorite game. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get famous off cosplaying, because there's another thing I want to do that'll make me famous. I use happen. this. <laughs> <laughs> <It's gonna happen. laughs> I don't know if it happens. That's cool, I guess, but it's still not my main 100% focus. Like, mm -hmm. I, I am so dead set on just... You know, playing you know, like playing college uh, soccer right now, and um, that's working out well. So mm, that's more for me. You yeah, know? And yeah. Like, <laughs> and like um, but like cosplaying is my, it's my way of de-stressing from this from this world. You know, because in those three days, four days where I'm at a convention and stuff like that, dressed up as my favorite character, it's it's the best. It's like I don't I don't care if I get famous because I'm with my friends. I'm doing I'm having the time of my life. Mm -hmm. That's that's what cosplay to me is. It's not becoming, you know. There's people that do become famous. Good for you, you know. Like that's all for you. But like, I love it to de-stress, to be able to just come back with like a ah, sense that I was having so much fun in the costume that I built. So that's me. But if you want to do check some things out, I mean, I do have an Instagram where I mostly update with just like you know face like like cosplay stuff. It's on Instagram. It's uh, it's your it's uh, I T S Y O R U. Check it out. I have an Instagram. I mean, um, a Tumblr with that same name. I reblog funny things. Lots of cats. Lots of dogs. <laughs> you yeah. check me out there. And then um, I'm very friendly on um on PSN. I'm barely on though. I will 
tell you guys that I am barely on PS on the PSN. It's the same thing. It's I T S Y O R U. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, just that live. Do what you want. Live what you want, how you want to live, and whatever makes you happy, go forth because you never know if that'll be your your dream, and you end up making money off of it. Mm-hmm. Make yourself happy for it. I would say you know his Delson Rowe from Infamous ah. and, and his Ezio were both very very much favorites of mine. I know there are more coming. Um, but the, Stop, dude. Yeah, dude, seriously. <laughs> and um, Dave, you also have a thing that you do with uh, WDWP. Uh, yes, why do we play? WDWP.co, where we talk about gaming and nerdy various things. Um, Podcasting-wise, we actually did a random one on the fly the other day because it came up in conversation, like, who could beat Batman? And it turned into like a half hour or like two and a half hour long conversation because <laughs> you couldn't it, it, like anybody. It didn't matter who you listed. Like Batman could beat somehow. It's like true. It, <laughs> it's true. It, <laughs> like, as, long as, as long as the scenarios and situations are set up in his in in a not in someone else's favor, it's like totally, we, yeah. Like it was, it was if quite Batman quite doesn't fun. have kryptonite and he's going after Superman, he's not gonna win. Oh yes, he but, will. Uh, another way he <laughs> but, like it was it was crazy like the way like that like my buddy defended batman and that i brought up anybody from any universe if it was like one of those like ufc fight night showdowns where you had like a few months to train and everything <laughs> like batman would fucking win every fucking time the only caveat that i came up to too was that um if if batman was just approached by almost anybody like in regular bruce wayne attire not expecting it out of anywhere he would get pwned like a new, like, no, like he would get destroyed. Well, Sorry. And like you the idea of Spider Man, for example, he Spider Man yes. literally has yeah. the ability to. <laughs> That's the one. That, that's the one-on-one fight I would love to see because Batman relies on the secret, you know, like the, the element of surprise. You know, the the, the How League do you of Shadows. Someone who can't be surprised. That's I mean. exactly what it is. He's yeah. the closest one that I think that would be able not be able to beat him. You know, without going on a full-out offensive. You know, like yeah. going. <laughs> I, I don't know. This would be like a, a six-hour conversation. With me. Yeah, <laughs> Just, it, it was it was fun. <laughs> but like, besides talking nerdy stuff, it's mostly gaming centric. And um, posting various articles, but podcasting a lot li- lately. But awesome. yeah, it's been fun. Good, good. And of course, Ben, people can check out your uh, your your game on iOS and on Android. But is there anywhere yep. else people can check some of your stuff out? Uh, there is uh, uh, the Facebook page is um, Facebook Facebook slash um, because zombies game, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of information there. But my my company is called Double Smoked Software. Mm-hmm. And uh, people can just go to doublesmoke.com. There's all oh, that's that's the main place where everything's updated, and there's trailers there, and there's links to all the different you know Google Play and iTunes and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, and there should be all sorts of uh, you know, I try to be as many different places as I can. So yeah, Very just awesome. like your Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just exactly. like your cool, cool, awesome. Time to you know spread it around and everything like that. I'm definitely gonna check out these videos and stuff. Yeah, we just downloaded it on the um, onto our phone, so let's just uh, you know. It's gonna yeah. be good. <laughs> let, let me know what you think, and um, and whatever you uh, you know, uh, I'd love to talk to you guys if you uh, about whatever you whatever you think. Um, any any gamer that wants to that has thoughts on it, totally wanna wanna uh, tear it up and and let me know what I can what we can do, and uh, and then what went right as well. Absolutely, so, absolutely, yeah, man. true. So guys, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. This has been a, a wonderful time. I. Thoroughly enjoy doing this, and so this is why I continue doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, I, I thank you guys for your time because time is valuable. Yeah, thank, thank you, thanks for inviting me. Like I, this sort of came out of the blue, and uh, but it's been super fun, and Good. I love meeting, meeting new people, and and how you guys are all like it just blows me away how ma- how many passionate people there are out there, and how and <laughs> so yeah, meeting you guys has been great. Yeah, and uh, hope to see awesome. you guys uh, around and see you see you all over the place. So. Yeah, hopefully we'll be seeing you at the next convention. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, we'll be, hope for pa- maybe Pax East. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We'll be all rooting for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need somebody to maybe we need somebody to dress to dress up as our main character. That's the thing. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's just all let me know. Up, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll definitely do it. No problem. Yeah. You know? Although, wait, wait, wait. When you see him, there's not. It's not going to be a very interesting costume. <laughs> oh, I know. Like, okay. It's like regular guy, it's but he's yeah. He's, he's, his weapon is like a crowbar or a, a, a pipe wrench. wrench. So yeah. it's a dude, dude with a wrench. Yeah. <laughs> dude with a wrench. I got it. I'm gonna check that out and then put something together and just. Submit yeah, it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I'm and, serious. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna draw the, the podcast to a close. But again, thank you everyone at home for listening and or watching our faces move and talk and stuff. <laughs> and as <laughs> oh, always, yeah, uh, we'll catch you on the next podcast or video. Game on, and Jay plays out.